That's tomorrow. And that is it for us today. Okay, I don't know. Just read it, Bill. Whatever it is, it's not right on the teleprompter. I don't know what that is. I've never seen that. I know you haven't seen it because you have the IQ of a turnip, you hapless gorilla. Just read it. Now, I can't read it. There's no, there's no words the on words it. words are right here. What's the matter with you? Are you blind as well as stupid? How can someone have a head that large without anything in it? Is it just fluid up there? And what are you doing with that hair? Did you just blow dry your scalp until it resembles a coconut? Is that what you were going for? There's no words there to play us out. What does that mean, to play us out? Have you ever read Flowers for Algernon? You remind me of the guy in that story before he got smarter. You remind me of Lenny from Mice and Men because I think I should take you outside and shoot you before someone else has to kill you for being so stupid. I don't know what that means. It means you're so dumb, you're practically inhuman. You're like a baboon, but less clever. What does that mean? I hate you so much. All right, go, Don't go. yell at me. I'll bounce this binder off that half-deflated basketball you call a face. That's tomorrow, and that is that. Screw this up again, pal. We'll send you over to Fox News. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. And we will leave you with a... I can't do it. You are mentally handicapped. We'll do it live. You can't even get it right after five takes. Why would I agree to do it live? We'll do it live! Fuck it! No, fuck you! We're not gonna do it live! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! How are you gonna write it? You can't even read it, you troglodyte homunculus. Last chance. In five, four, three. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks again for watching. We'll leave you with Sting and a cut off his new album. Take it away. You want to? Let's do this. Let's do this. Come. Yo, 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 yo. What's up? What's up? Detroit is definitely in the building via your headphones, stereo speakers. Of course, I'm your man, the African Caesar. Uh, we got a great show for you guys. Um, but first, before we get into all that, let me introduce the crew. Uh, MJ was supposed to be here, so now it's just an empty chair. She'll be here at some point, you know. CP time. Gino skipped out again, too. Huh? Gino skipped out today. I know, too. yeah. Where's Gino at? I know he's, man. Ah, man, I'm telling you, black folk. Anyway, uh, you know who he is here? Dunks. Dunks is here. Over here scrambling to buy sneakers right now, man. Yes, Stone Kobe. They, they just appeared on the uh, sneakers up, like, yesterday. It's a 10-minute draw, and 15s are already gone. Dang. Hopefully one of them went to me, so was, <laughs> fingers crossed, right? Uh, and then, of course, we have the soul of the show. We got Guru. What's going on? You say you called the, the soul of the show? The soul yeah. of the show. What's going on, people? See, I, it's funny how that works, right? Like, call him the North Star. Oh, no, I'm not that. The soul? Yes, most definitely. So, Framing. And then, of course, we have the lovely, 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 ah, lovely AD. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. What's up, what's up, what's up? How are you? Oh, man, I'm good. Um, real quick, shout out to, uh, I want to shout out uh, Ben Kirby again from um, last week. You know, I had him on the show last week. Uh, got some very positive responses to uh, her, I mean her. Got some very positive responses to the interview we did with him. Mm -hmm. uh, I still have family members that are mad at me, but yeah, it is what it is. Um, and then, you know, it's always tough mixing religion in with any topic, but it was well done, and there's important things to be said and learned and taken away from it. 100%. And then, uh, hey, can we close that door in the background? Oh, I went to the intern gets in here. And then I think we're joined by somebody. We got a special guest? Yo, yo. <laughs> What's up? What's going on, man? About time you tell him I'm here. Man, I you ain't even tell him I was here yet. <laughs> I had to do the introductions. Good, hey, can you close those doors for us? There you go. Um, the perks of doing a live show. Uh, but no, right. thank you for joining us. Hey, we're um, getting better and better. We are getting better and better. You know, we, we, we're still dysfunctional. We are organized chaos at its best. So <laughs> on that note, uh, Mary, what's up, man? What's going on, everybody? So I guess you're going to fill in for MJ until she gets here, which is cool. That's fine. Let's do us. it. Um, 
All right, so we got a number of things we're going to get to on the show, including we got Mosh275 come on the show later on to talk about his new shoe, as well as uh, a new uh, NFT that he's working on. King Spill the Beans on it just yet. But Caught my attention. Yes, yes. If I, I'm telling you, the only reason I'm using the word NFT is because Mosh is coming on here. I cannot stand the word NFT. I don't know what it is. I don't care. A to know non-fungible what it is. token. <sighs> That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Think about it. It's like a digital card backed by blockchain like cryptocurrency. That's ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. You might as well stop trying to yeah. Kobe's only a size four left. Um, yeah. <laughs> but also, too, uh, definitely want to jump on a number of topics, including uh, we got MJ. Oh, no, not, not, not MJ. We got... We got um, a whole bunch of special things planned and in the yeah. works right now. Right. I told you. <laughs> Go scoot you up. No. <laughs> the person doing the live show. <laughs> yeah, um, they can't even move me, bro. But no. Well, she's here now. I can get up if you'd like. I <laughs> <laughs> I t- it's, but no, so we got a number of things we're going to get to. No, Marcus Jordan, his uh, Michael Jordan's son, he's... Uh, Working on another backdoor collaboration. Yes, yes. And it's funny, though, because I, I can't spill the beans on that, but... Um, I don't know if he's just stunting or if that's an actual thing, but it is what it is. You know, those 17s uh, they did a while ago were super underrated. You know, that's my favorite collab that they did. The 17s. Oh, yeah, the they were great. Oh, the, the gray ones. Yeah, the yeah. 23s and uh, um, And, like, there was 17. no hype behind that. I got, I got that manually on the website, no bots, no nothing. It's one of my favorite sneakers. Now, Mayor. anything he does, you don't even stand a chance. Mayor, I know you got 17s that. were good money. They were definitely good. I like those. I think this is because people I'm don't like 17s. agree on that. <laughs> I think people just yeah, me and you see that. Me and you see eye to eye of a whole bunch of other things. <laughs> <laughs> that guy dunks don't. That guy dunks don't like me, but it's okay. Man, I'm so glad y'all kissed and made up. Um, no, I, I appreciate you coming on the show and, and overlooking things, and I apologize for anything that was said in the past negatively. Oh no! Nah. I apologize for your actions. That's cool. You don't like me inside. <laughs> no problem. I'm a different guy. I'm a different guy. It's okay. <laughs> he loves you. Yeah. It's teamwork. Yeah. Now nah, your girl here too, by the way. Where my girl MJ at? She here. She in the, she in the audience. She's been cheating on me for she's been cheating on me for years. But it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm gonna do. I'm so gonna no, do. <laughs> I can't wait till she hears this. Um, she but no, over so there blushing. Yeah. Man, yeah, kind of, yeah. sort of. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta get the help. The, 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 the ha, like that. You yeah. gotta get the head to <laughs> back on it. <laughs> Um, but no, so uh, we got a number of topics we're going to get into. But first, as always, we're going to get right into, well, let me introduce the show. Uh, well, it's social media. You can follow us on t- Twitter at TSB underscore show. You can follow us on Instagram at the sneakerbox underscore show. And you can follow us on Facebook by simply looking up the sneakerbox radio show page. And make sure to hit us up on our voicemail hotline at 248-677-1803. Whether you want to respond to something we said on the show, or you got any sneaker comments or questions. Definitely hit us up, and then we'll respond to it on the later show. Um, and also, too, this is episode 292 on our podcast, meaning we're about eight episodes away from 300. Once again, man, that's that's a huge honor to be able to do 300 sneaker episodes. It's crazy. I didn't yes, think we were going to get that far. Um, honestly, we didn't have a plan <laughs> at all. It was just we just started recording and just kind of saw where it took us. So uh, thanks to all our followers, all our Fans, supporters, mayor. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. On 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 that note, we got let's get into our five five sneaker releases from the previous week or of the week. Uh, starting with number five, we had the Nike Cosmic Unity Ghost, which I believe dropped today. It was supposed to drop yesterday. That's true. Everywhere I go, because I wanted to get a pair to hoop in. Everywhere it goes sold out. I'm like, are you serious? This can't be for real. Like it'd be two three no, sizes less. These probably one of my favorite new sneakers. Yeah. Ain't no probably. It is. It is my favorite new sneaker. I, I love this shoe. I have nothing bad to say about this shoe. I love the way it looks. I love the way it performs. I love the way it feels. This is the perfect sneaker for me. So I don't know how everybody else feels about it. I know how I feel about it. And so anyway, Mayor. It look good. Thoughts? It you look ain't got good. a pair? I, uh, nah, I don't have a pair. Oh, man. You got to get you a pair. I don't, I don't have everything. Um, I, put, nah, I, put, I, put, I put in a good word for you. Please do that. Cause right. days, I'm, days, I'm glad, they, I'm they glad you admit your like alliances, man. You be acting like he act like he can't get nothing. We be having houses, boxes delivered to his house, like Frank Lucas. Like okay. we know how you get down, homie. We know how you get down. That's my job to make sure people know how you get down. Wow. I don't get, I don't get stuff like I used to. I still get stuff in the mail, but I don't get it like I used to. I used to. I mean, back in the days, it was droves and droves and boxes coming in all the time. But um, I'm at a point in my life right now where. I don't even have that much room for anything anymore. So if I really, really don't want it, I'm okay on it. I'm not, I don't know if I like Humble Mayor. 
I don't know if I like that mayor. I don't mind it. I don't know if I like it. <laughs> no, I'm being honest though. I don't get. I don't. I don't get everything. I, you, I mean, you want to stunt? You just said y'all struck out on the Kobe Hall of Fame. Was that y'all was looking for? Yeah. I don't know. I'm still. Yeah. I'm still. I mean, trying. My, my pair. My pair will be here Monday. But I mean, oh, you want that? I can do that. Got right. the plug. See, Please. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, you're gonna do that. You know, salute to Kobe going into the Hall of Fame. You know, we could do that. You know. <laughs> I'm checking my emails now. Nah, I'm pretty uh, sure I didn't we, get it. We could. We could. We could do that. You know. Classic. You know, we yeah. could we could stunt, but I'm just here to be nice. Yep. I missed out. <laughs> well, anyway, number four is already on the screen. We have the Air Jordan 35 Smoke Gray. Now I got beef with this shoe. The reason I got beef with this shoe is leading up to the release, it was saying it went up to a men's 18, and then the day of the release, only went up to a 14. So I'm kind of pissed off because I was like the one pair of 35s. Because they they sent the 15 to you. PECs. I didn't get my. I you ain't got you ain't got it yet. Yeah, that's I, what it is. I probably won't ever get it. Stop it. He, as he got a pair of 15s on right now as we speak, though. No 14s. Well, hey, yeah, well, well, team well, late's better than 34.5s. They look like a 15. And it took me like two years to get these. I had to go to Chicago to get these. Oh, Michael Jordan had to. You had to go to Nike Town, Chicago. <laughs> or Nike office in Chicago, upstairs. Wow. You got to go to the elevator, wow. building real, you know, discreet. I know that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> All right, everybody got jokes. But no, I actually like this shoe. I thought it was dope. I like the quilted pattern. It doesn't work on every shoe, but it worked on these. Um, and that? I think a lot of people, I mean, I'm surprised that they sold out as well as they did because I didn't think people like 35s like that. I don't think they sold out. I think they probably put a 150 pair on there. You know, we've seen sneakers <laughs> wow. has been doing a lot of their releases as draws, and this was a first come, first serve, which Nike must have known there wasn't as much as demand behind the silhouette. Uh, I'm a fan, though. I like them. Yeah. Not a bad looking shoe. I like the quilted pattern as well, but again, if I'm not going crazy for it, I don't want it. But um right. my basketball days are over too, so I guess I'm okay with that. Your basketball days are over. You lost all that weight and you're gonna <laughs> stop playing basketball? Nah, I still get busy. All right, we got I still we, get busy. next time we come to New York, we're gonna see. You gonna hoop? I'm, I'm a, I'm, bust your ass. I'm going to He said he go, we've been waiting for him to hoop for what, twenty seventeen? Twenty sixteen? He not hooping. I'm just, it's, like riding a, it's like riding a bike. It was supposed to be me and him versus Jumpman and MJ. And he gonna, backed out at the last minute. Not because I hurt my had back. Had to forfeit. <laughs> On my bad, I actually had to go to work and I actually had to do some things and I hurt my back. What happened? Like, what was that? The Rockefeller and Terror Squad? I ain't had to play to win the championship. That's how I showed up. <laughs> Same way. We had to forfeit. They won. Wow. <laughs> that's funny. Wow. Crazy. Oh, shit. Um, that's hilarious. Number three, we got the Nike SB Dunk High TV signal. I don't know if these dropped in the U.S. I'm not sure they did either. I think this was Europe only, and I don't know if there are plans to bring them overseas. They probably would. They're probably going to drop them like uh, what little. Cut. You know, we uh, had the uh, that Celtic static. I forgot what they were calling it, but it was like the high top Celtic with like a, a fuzzy computer screen looking image. Hmm. Another high top that was Euro only. Um, personally, did they I make think... their way over here though eventually? No. No? Okay. Mm -mm. Dirty's Got Soul ended up copping a pair when he heard they weren't coming, so he did a little video on them. So, but I think these would both do better if they were low tops. So here's I'm what just Nike, not feeling the colorway. Nike's been low-key doing some stuff where the shoes were released everywhere else, like on Foot Locker, overseas, and you know, places like that. And then they'll quietly show up on the Nike website. Like the Penny 5 showed up like that. The Penny 3 showed up like that. Um, by the time I got to them, they was already gone in my size, but luckily I was still able to get a pair. Um, there's been a number of shoes this year that's, that have showed up quietly on the Nike app. so Especially mids. Every Jordan 1 mid drop just quietly shows up. I don't wear mids. Yeah, I, but there, I, there's been an increase in demand, and that's like the release yeah. procedure for those. I just know there's a lot of hate towards people that don't like mids. Like, I, I can't don't. believe that because every time I'm at work, they sell out. They go, they're gone. They sell. No, I'm saying I don't like mids. Uh, I don't yeah. think anyone's buying mids to keep them. I think everyone's reselling the mids because there's really like a it. small market where... I mean, for everybody, for everybody reselling them is somebody buying them, so the demand right. is there. By hook, by hook or by crook, the demand is there. I'm not a fan either, but yeah, I just not I'm not a fan like, of that. I'm not a fan of that SB right there, and I'm definitely not a fan of mids. I don't like mid anything. Mid Air Force Ones, mid Jordan Ones, not my thing. You don't like Air Force One mids? Hell no, it's just it's trash. <laughs> okay, uh, time out, time out. Which, what about the ones with the jewel logo? Two pair of mids in my, ever in my life. I got two pair of mids, and I'll tell you what they both was, and they was both gifts. Michael Vick gave me the... The Air Force One with the seven on the back, that was a mid, his signature shoe. I got that, and I, I had kept that for a long time. And then in Canada, somebody had gave me that um that white and red Air Force mid back in the days with the little Canadian flag on the side, like the maple syrup joint or whatever it was. And 
Those are the only two mids I probably ever owned in my life. There's there's two pair of mids, actually three pair of mids that I would actually buy. There's one that were all navy blue with the uh, orange jewel swoosh, and then there were two pairs that came out. I remember I was in the seventh grade when these dropped, where like it was like half white, half blue, and then it was like half red, half white. Mm -hmm. Those two pairs I would get. Those would be the three Mid pairs. Mids are trash. You you actually forgetting a pair of mids. What's that? When we went to Nike at the Blue Ribbon Studios and they gave us that mid to do. Oh yeah, they yeah. Did so it. that's the only mid I have. The one we customized there, yeah. I had did it for my son. You know, like last for my year, son, but when we voted sneaker of the year, I put the uh, Maison Chateau Rouge as my number one. That's hands down my favorite pair of mids of all time. The reason I can't get one one mids though is like I just. It, it don't look right. That's all Birdman. He had it for years. That's all him. I don't like mids. It, it don't look right. Like, the, the, well, the reason they don't look right, aside from just the cut, they try and recycle popular colorways with like a slight modification. Well, is that? But not even before they started doing that, that whole way. But no, I, I ain't like the Jumpman logo. I don't think the Jumpman logo looks right on Air Jordan 1. That's first and foremost. Two, I don't like the truncated look of it. Like, obviously it's shorter because it's a mid, but even when Michael Jordan played in the mid, like, where his, his pairs were mids, like the heel collar was truncated, not the entire upper. So I, I, I just don't like the way it looks. It looks off to me. But, you know, if you like it, I love it. So whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm lost in the sauce. You guys are going to Nike to get stuff done. You guys are different now, man. Wow. Get out of, that was two years ago. Listen, that's, <laughs> listen you guys is. You've been there since then. Okay. All hey, right, we uh, really got rid of Gino. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, number two, we got the Sting Water Special Edition Nike SB Dunk Low Magic Mushroom. I actually forgot that these drop. I actually planned on getting these, and then I slept. Um, Cosmetically, yeah, why, why did you? Why did you plan on getting these? Give me a reason why anybody <laughs> likes this shoe. I, I, I look like that. I look. I look like the Nike hater today, which is ne which never happens. But yo, oh, you're gonna pick four no, no, shoes. No, no, no. Let me, well, first, let me say this because I get accused of being a Nike hater all the time. So it's funny to me. It's funny to me when people say that because it's like. On one hand, I'm a Nike lover, and on the other hand, I'm a Nike uh, shit. Show me some not. show me some regular dunks that have come out in the last week or something. Show y'all just showed me four shoes. It's like no man, no. Man, you want, I, <laughs> Cosmetically, we, we all can't have Michael Vick mids. These aren't pleasing, but story wise, they they tell they match that ugly story. ass. They match they match they match your uh they match your shirt. <laughs> hey man, it took him only seven months to get him a Falcons hat to go with that Falcons jersey. So last time, last story. time he had a Cardinals hat with that jersey on, but me and Gina had to call so him out. That's, no, that's why. So, I, so you, you the guy, you the guy that wear that wear Adidas sweatpants with Air Force One, Tom. See, you got jokes. <laughs> no, you that guy. Easy. No, actually, you that guy. MJ. Actually, that's What's MJ. What's wrong with that? Actually, that's MJ. She's done that. MJ, if me and you were on our way to dinner, Adidas, and I down, you had Adidas on and Nike track pants. I swear to my mother, I'm turning back around. <laughs> so says, if and I'm gonna politely ask you, you to change. Going out stop and Foot you got on Adidas track pants with Nike shoes. He's turning around. <laughs> she said she was 17 when she did that. So C's is bringing yes. up old stuff. That's past the statute oh, okay. limitation. Oh, C's. Right. So you brought up old stuff. You just brought up old stuff. That was 17. Y'all gonna what? What? Five, six years ago? Something like that. No, no, Yours like years that ago. was four months ago. That was like two years. That ago. That was four months ago. And that was not for nothing. Why is, why is MJ? Why is MJ not on camera? That I got to look at you, uh, gruesome gentleman. Like why is MJ uh, not on uh, camera? I don't know. We have room. Well, I know she. Yeah, we can get her on. MJ, where you at? He says where we you bought, at. We bought, oh, we tell me you ain't. Oh, tell me you ain't do your hair. You ain't put your lipstick on. I don't want hair on that. We about to get her on, uh. but no, going back to why we set her up. Getting back to these dunks. Now I uh, actually liked them. I actually liked them. He I thought they were clean. You. They were cool. I'm not saying they're the greatest dunks ever. I just think they look nice. Ah. Um, uh. Mm. A lot of people are confusing the safari pattern for the actual uh, psycho or whatever the uh, like the print of the spores, if you will. Right. So I don't know. In terms of storytelling, I think it's an interesting concept. It's got the stash pocket. The inside kind of looks like a mushroom, but it's hard to pull off an all red shoe. No, I, I, I mean that's well. Everybody knows. Uh, I mean. Not. I pull off all red shoes all the time. I'm saying everybody knows. I, for the most part, I love all red shoes. <laughs> But this particular pair, and I don't even like lows like that. That's the thing, too. I don't really like dunk lows, but these were smooth. Uh, it's a red shoe. I like the uh, ice bottoms on there. We, we know you like red shoes. Yes. I know. I'm, the only thing missing is a source awards in you. Oh, man. <laughs> what you all, all red on. That's <laughs> nah, it, it was. It was no, nah, I see. Now, nah, I don't buy every all red it. pair. I don't buy every all red pair, but when they're dope enough. And I thought this shoe was dope enough, so. I don't know. I mean, they didn't meet. Obviously, they didn't meet Mayor's standard of uh, dopeness, but 
Hey, listen, you know, I, I love Aziz, but them shits is trash. I wasn't familiar trash? with okay, Stingwater no. before this. Now, and... I just have to explain. Oh, go ahead, Dunks. I'm sorry. I'm going to cut you off. Well, I was saying usually when there's like a collab, they bring hype to it, or it's like, oh, look who Nike's working with. Yeah. I personally, like, I'm in skateboarding. I never hit her. I wasn't even familiar with Stingwater before this collab. Now, here's my thing about this shoe, though. I want to know why. I want to know why Mayor doesn't like this shoe. I mean, I don't like the jewel swoosh on on the SB. It just it just doesn't resonate resonate right. The little to, to clear clear to clear mid to clear out. It just doesn't sit right with the red on me. It just doesn't look appealing to me. And mind you, I love SB lows. It just doesn't appeal. It doesn't seem real. You know, I, maybe with a big swoosh, I would have liked it. Yeah, it's very. Maybe if they would have done sting water in the shape you of the what? swoosh. Doesn't the other side have the big swoosh? I think it's just jewel bejeweled on the inside. Yeah, I just I'm not a fan. Of, I mean, that's the yeah. picture I always keep seeing. So I'm not a fan of it that way. MJ! He said, what's going on, MJ? What's up? You all right, my bad. <laughs> you don't love me no more. Always do. That ain't never gonna go nowhere. <laughs> you been all right? Put on my Twitter. I'm good. I'm good. I can't call it. See, because I'm, I'm a little short. I know. We're getting her set up. This is our first show on the... On, this is our first time being on the show, so we're getting her set up. Now, had, okay. she showed up had she showed up on time, we would have. You know, she's, fa uh, she's fashionably late. Okay, I'm about exactly. to hit him with it. <laughs> yeah. you know all right, it's fashionably late. It's cool. And, but nah, so I mean, are you feeling these dunks or no? Nah, that's okay. uh, out of the question. All right, so just me then, Guru. Anybody, anybody right, else? Yeah. Dunks doesn't even like the dunks. You already know me. I'm Euro stepping past these. Thank all right, you. Well, okay. Well, hopefully we all agree on number one, and number one would be the Distinct Life Special Edition Deodora Homeschool Collection. Shout out to our guy Rick Williams. This for Murray, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay, yeah, hear me. that's what it looks like, Murray Wright colors. Yeah, shout out to him. That's the school here in Detroit for people that don't know. But shout out to him on this collab with the Adora. I'm Definitely sure all the shoot. Murray Wright alum is happy. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, nah, those are hard. Oh, those are hard. Wish they came in the size 15, but, you know, the Adora don't go up that high, so <laughs> all I can do is just live vicariously through other people. Uh, you just, see Gene comment? Somebody was just talking so know, about them uh, shoes yesterday. Gene, Gene comment like, with, with the Puff Daddy in Miami bucket hat for his avatar. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> but no, nah, this is definitely dope. Uh, shout out to Rick Williams. And speak, and while I'm thinking about it too, shout out to Rel too, because I know they're doing the toy drive, or the, my bad, the sneaker drive at mm -hmm. Burn Rubber today. Uh, shout out to Kids for Kids. Um, if you have any shoes that are gently used, gently used, or uh, unworn, please swing by Burn Rubber today and drop off a pair um, so they can be donated to kids in need. Um, Shout out Burn Rubber. The other day, they kind of secretly, silently dropped a delayed shipment of the red and gray dunks and just made a post on Instagram. It was first come, first serve, kind of like the good old days. Yeah, I like Did that. they do it on Twitter? <laughs> like the good old I days. saw it on Instagram and actually didn't make oh, it in time, right. but I saw some people hit, so I like the release procedure. Oh, man. Um, ugliest release of the week. Now, let, before we put up the picture of the shoe, let me preface it by saying this: <laughs> nothing. No, we need to put it up. Okay, so see, you tripping, now, I'm gonna tell bro. you why. Now, you should already know why I made these ugliest release. You admit it was you though. Yeah, yeah this I, is all. Oh, this is your I've ugliest release said of the week. Wasn't. Is your pick? I've though. never said it wasn't. See, I hate you Michigan State. Hold on, hold on. I hate yeah, everything. That's the ugliest shoe. That's the ugliest. Let me green. tell you why. Let me tell you why. Nick, Eric, listen. I went to state for like seven years. I don't care. Man. Say this thing. I hate Michigan State. So anything oh, yeah, to do with Michigan white. State is getting my automatic hatred. Smoke green, care. snort white. I don't care what it is. It can be Air Jordan as, as, as a collective, you guys don't do this. You just sit here and you pick this nope. shoe and call it yep. the ugly nope. Yep, C's picks it, yep. He in control. That's crazy. You see, you bugging. That's hate. That's pure hate. You can get all that. That's I told why. you it was. I that's admitted why. that it was. I don't like Michigan State. Go blue. That's that's. It just comes down to that. Simple as that. <laughs> But the shoes, no, I'm, not fan, I'm not a I've fan of you, but I came on for and, and our <laughs> cannot be You came on here for him. I ain't never like I ain't never like your ass from the first day I met you. That's not fair. The lies you tell. I'm here sir. for the I'm here for the culture. The lies you tell, sir. Oh, that's whack. Hmm? No, I hate that shoe. I hate I hate I don't say I hate that shoe. I hate Michigan State. Hi, young lady in the thing. corner. How are you? She don't know she's on camera. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> No, I hate Michigan State, so therefore, I couldn't think of anything else. There were no Yeezys that you dropped. You couldn't think of nothing else. You couldn't think of like a Stingwater SB or something. You couldn't think of nothing else. <laughs> exactly. Huh? The Stingwater wasn't bad. Yes, it was. It wasn't bad. It, was it looked like it, it was, looked like it wasn't bad because it ain't green. Because it ain't. But it was. If it was Michigan green. State, it would have been on there. It would have been. Had Stingwater made Michigan a Michigan State, State dunk low, yes, that would have been it. Mm. That would have been the ugliest release. Guru, put this moment in the books. Oh, yeah, I got it. <laughs> Michigan State dunk. Oh, that was 
Put it in the book. Ugly. Stingray daughter that looked like the Melissa sandals, the clear ones oh, the girls wow. used to wear back in the day. That's what them dunks look like. <laughs> that was bad. Y'all finished? <laughs> <laughs> You, you went bad on that one. I don't care. Listen, I don't care. Nah, you went bad. I'll be on the that only one. one. I will die. You on woke this me hill. up at nine o'clock in the morning, and you. Went I will bad die on, on this hill. You know I could have still been asleep. You woke me up at nine in the morning. <laughs> I still I'm got bags under my eyes. Come on, man. I ain't take care of my skin this morning, and you talking I'm about just the ugliest shooter. You I'm the actually, ugliest shooter week. Wow. <laughs> I'm, actually, I'm actually surprised you didn't do the show the way we talked about that you was gonna do. I was going to go in the hot tub this morning, but yeah, it's a little too cold. It's a little too cold. I was going to do it for my hot tub this morning outside, but it's a little too hey. cold in Jersey today. Man. You supposed oh, no, to get sexy in the hot tub in the cold anyway. That makes the Yeah, I know, but I didn't want to do it. It was just a little a little too cold for me to sit there and walk out with the robe. and my you know, I didn't want to shave my nipples in the morning while I was outside. <laughs> wow. All right, so you know what? We got a new segment. <laughs> well, it's not even a new segment. It's just something we reformatted. Um, the Coming Soon segment. So... To kind of make it more fun, uh, we're gonna go over some of the more uh, the upcoming releases. Now they don't have a set release date, but they're coming out soon. So kind of keep your heads up. Um, but to make it more fun, we renamed it "Buy or Buy." So basically, we all gonna decide whether or not this shoe is worth buying or worth saying buy to. So uh, starting up, we got the Nike Giannis Immortality. Um, this is some type of lifestyle shoe mm. that he has coming out. Mm. Nope. I'm mm. saying bye to him. Bye. Mm. Here you That's go. Goodbye. Here you go. No. Mm. Goodbye. But you ain't want to put this with the ugly sneaker of the week. It didn't come out yet. It don't matter. It's it a didn't picture. Come out it's yet. eligible. It's, it's, it's a picture. It's eligible. That week. That's why. So you telling me that? So you telling me that's the ugly? That's the ugly sneaker of the week next week? Whenever it comes out, it will be. We all right. I'm gonna but get you will you buy? buy or buy? I'm saying buy too. Oh, buy Felicia. Right, right, right. Yeah, buy you know, Felicia. See, he's probably he probably driving though. He probably got a pair. So don't let him front on you. Oh my god. <laughs> he be saying these shoes whack. Four months later, he be on his club pictures in the, on the gram table with him on. So, <laughs> see, he's probably grabbing though. But yeah, they are terrible. A lifestyle shoe that look like a running shoe. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So this is kind of. You remember when I had the KD whatever. Oh, that was oh, terrible too. The KD lifestyles with the double. You know what? I want Nike to send me. I want Nike to send me a pair of those, and I'm gonna run in them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. That's not a bad idea. I'm gonna run in them. So we all agree on this shoe, then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we got the Nike KD 14 Deep Royal. My only problem with the shoe is just like it looks. You're like, not mad at that? I'm not mad at them. It, it's the it, it's like a it's like a Kyrie 2.0. The strap, the back heel with them, it's like, it's almost like a... a I wish I, I was going to say, I wish I could see the back oh, heel more. We, we, we've come a long way from the KD4, boy, I tell you. Oh, yes, we yeah. have. Yeah. And this is the thing, the crazy thing about oh. it, this is probably the best yeah. looking shoe in the last four years. Oh, by far. I was going to say, I stopped dealing <laughs> so, with KD4. <laughs> so so that lets you know, you know what? what? I far. guess I'm old, and I guess I'm old, and I don't think I'm gonna be doing these shows too much more, too much longer because I, I must have lost it because these shits is trash. No, I, <laughs> hey, keep it real, keep it real. No, I honestly I don't hate these. I'm not saying these are the greatest shoes ever, but I wish I could see more of that heel though because that's the only question I have about. You got shoes. them Kyrie six uh, trophies. That's the heel. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> it's darn near the same. I, I took those you. back actually. I took them straight. Oh, you took them back? Yeah, I was like, I ain't feeling. Dang! Why you take? Like, once you get them back? in hand, cause you you know it's like when you go to the Burger King or somewhere where you, you see it on the picture and then you get it all flat and smashed. Have you returned food at a fast food establishment? Yes. <laughs> I that. Yes, I have. It's like yo, like cause I, one hey, time they now that me, story. You, you I look like you ain't never returned no meal nowhere. Stop lying. Oh, see, yeah. wow. <laughs> hey, hey, they shorted. I remember they shorted him. Like, Who's a podcast in Detroit? They shorted you like four nuggets after hey, the show. I've you double no, back. That's I've heard this story. He's double back. He shorted him four nuggets. He double back. No, no, no. This what happened. They didn't short me. Let me tell you what happened. They didn't short me. What it was? I ordered a ten piece nugget. That's real beef. These dudes. Instead of telling me, instead of telling me that they ain't have any more nuggets, they took two chicken strips and cut them up into five pieces. <laughs> like only in Detroit would that happen. So I'm like, Ooh. just tell me you ain't had no nuggets. Don't give me two. That's, chicken that's strips. why. That's why I'm scared of Detroit. That's exactly why. Oh I'm my going. god! Oh, yeah, you're, <laughs> you're I'm scared. That story. Mm -hmm. I hung out. I hung out in Detroit a few times, and I like shout to Rick and Roll. I hung out. I did a burn rubber collab with my mayor bag a long time ago. And uh, and then another time that I went there, I don't have good experiences in, in Detroit. I'd be scared. I ain't gonna lie to you. That make me nervous. And I'm I'm not no punk. And I'd be like in Chicago. I mean in uh, Detroit, I'd be like, oh hell no. Oh my god. Let me, let me tell you something. Let me let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I went to the, the, when I did the, the burn rubber um collab. 
I went to a casino, right? Thank God I was at a hotel across the street from the casino. Yo, I walk in there, it's armed security already when you walk into the casino. I'm like, oh shit, this ain't cool, right? So I play blackjack. I'm a gambler. I like to play blackjack. I win some money. I probably win anywhere. Don't quote me on the number. Anywhere from seven to $12,000, right? Could have been 4,000. It could I don't even remember to be honest. I know I won a lot of money. So when I'm cashing out, yo, when I tell you all eyes on me, <laughs> when I was going to cash out and the lady that was paying me was looking sideways while she was paying me, she was and she paying me and I'm like, next thing you know, I looked to the side, there's stink pink gators on this side, there's dudes on this side, there's dudes that look like they just got high in the bathroom. No, no, it's so crazy. And mind you, if anybody know me, no, I'm not. I'm tough. Yo, I walked out of the casino backwards. <laughs> I ain't want to turn my back on nobody. And the police dude in the front was shaking his head like, damn, money, we're not getting out of here. Yo, thank God the hotel was literally across the street. Oh my and I got God. back to my hotel and I was like, oh my God, I can't wait to get the fuck out of here. I was going to say, that must have been a while ago because not hotels are attached. That was, right? Yeah, I can't wait to get it. Maybe there was an attachment and I didn't know how to get it. I was, it was literally, oh, yeah. literally, it's not he even, probably literally walked. like. <laughs> Greek town, it's like he was at Greek like, town. Exactly. It was yeah. literally like 15 steps across the street, but yeah, I walked. Back oh yeah, that's Greek Town. You was at Greek Town. Yeah, yeah, I was like, don't they usually yo, you need understand. security to walk out when you uh, cash out a large sum? Yo, he know. looked at me like, yo, money, you on your own? <laughs> 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 nah, I was. I ain't gonna lie, I was uh. nervous. I got to the hotel, I was like, oh my god, I wish I would have lost. That's <laughs> what. Dead. That's the most Detroit thing, though. They will still like look and stare at you, like oh, he won. Yeah. They stare at you, you all the way out. That's the that's one. That's one. Fast forward years later. Greg, I don't know how Greg Street sucked me into doing this. Shout out to Greg Street. Um, there was a time in my life where I didn't like to fly a lot. So everything was driving for me. I had a red Jeep Wrangler, I'll never forget. I went to do a sneaker show in Atlanta and then we had to do something in Canada. So I drove from New York to Atlanta in a Jeep Wrangler. Where you can't go past 80 miles an hour because I had the big tires on that shit and forget about it. So I was disgusting, right? I drove to Atlanta. I did sneaker friends with Greg Street. After that, we had to go do, we got a bag to do the New Era Grand Opening in Montreal or Toronto or wherever it was at. Might have been Toronto. Um, so we drive, so then from there, I got to get up at five o'clock in the morning. I got to drive from Atlanta to Canada. So it takes you, uh, I guess, Kentucky, all that long. So I come around, I whip around, I'm in Detroit. Mm -hmm. There's a gas station right before you cross the border in Detroit. Yep. Mm -hmm. I pull up to the gas station. I'm going to get some gas. I get out the car. I see the most beautiful chick on the planet getting gas. I can't help it. I stop and I say something, yo shorty, you know, you amazing, blah, 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 let me holler at you. When I tell you some chick jumped out of the car, like, yo, my man, fuck you doing talking to my girl. It was some <laughs> 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 He looked at me like, yo, what the fuck you talking? And I'm like, so I get, I back up like, yo, ma, relax. And she getting crazy. So on my mind, I'm like, yo, I ain't never in my life put my hands on no chick. I'm like, what I'm gonna do? <laughs> like I'm sitting there, so shorty get back in the car, the young chick, right? The little pretty chick get back in the car. And the lady like, I thought it was her mom's at first. So wind up, she said some shit about like, yo, why you talking to my bitch, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh my God. Yo, why another girl get out the car? Now all three of them post up on me. Like, yo, wow. I'm, yo I got wow. my, and I knew the what. yo, listen. I got in the car, I was like, no problem. I said something back, they said something crazy. I got in the car and I drove around that big fence when you go into the border. There's no way in the world they was following me in there. Yeah, I was about to get my ass kicked by three chicks. One pretty oh chick and two God. chicks that look like monsters. <laughs> you don't understand? Like, so not like I was about to get my ass kicked. It's just funny that yeah. they had the pretty chick pumping the gas while they was sitting in the exactly. car. Exactly. Mm -hmm. like, no, it looked it looked like he was a pimp, like she was a pimp, and that was his yo. Shorty was when I tell you, Shorty was bad. Hmm. She was bad. Like I'm not the guy that talks to women in the street. She was bad. <laughs> wow. So yeah. that so that right there is gonna keep you from Detroit. That's two incidents. I'm not getting strike three. I'm oh yeah, that's, that's that's I, had, I actually <laughs> had a, on our terms. I had a friend who ran <laughs> yeah. to a similar situation. Unless MJ did. holding me down. I'm not I got you, I got you. Someone fill me in what's <laughs> going on. <laughs> Basically so, a bear is scared of Detroit. Like he don't ever want to come back to Detroit. He's one time he almost got Oh, I got you, you're safe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. There you go, I'm lit now. Uh -huh. I'm lit. Now, I had two incidents in Detroit, never again. That last situation, I had a friend um, that actually kind of happened to him the same thing, hollering at a chick, and then her girl came around on some Maybe tough it was stuff. the same one. Uh, I don't right. know. Might be. They just around starting I, fights. I thought Shorty was going to let it go on me. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> wow. Well, speaking of letting it go, uh, what y'all think about these uh, Nike Dunk Scrap Arkeos or 
RKO Browns. Am I saying that right? Archeo, Archeo. I know what you're talking about. I don't know what's going on with them. The shape's a little bit different. I think the toe is off. Yeah, it's like a scrap shoe. You guys putting the shoe on the screen? I don't see it. So I don't uh, know. Uh, he ain't put it on yet. Wait on easy. Oh, oh there you go. go. Oh, I actually Talk do like that. I could live with that opposed to anything else. That, that little circular part looks like it would almost be like for a skateboard shoe, like a little ollie cap, and I'm not feeling it. See, I feel like these will look like, I think this will look oh, good on MJ, but like oh, as a girl's shoe, but I don't think. I think Dang, I like why that you shoe. I mean, as a girl shoe, like because it looks like on a small foot. Like I don't think I could get away with it. I it's mean, got team edition vibes. Like I, I mean, you got that purple not. shoe in front of you, so this should be the least of your worries no, about are. getting away. And show the shoe. Show the shoe. He and worried about the dunks, but look at this shoe he caught. And he's a freak. <laughs> <laughs> but you worried about how the dunks gonna <laughs> look? Make her face. <laughs> But them dunks are nice. I like shoes like that. It kind of yeah, challenges the position. Wait, wait, no, no. What was that? It was a Converse something. Pro something. <laughs> exactly. So you at the point now where you don't care what they send you. You just had it. I sent some stuff back. These, I thought these were so different. What I'm you like, said No, you said you took some shoes back. You donated some shoes. You... I did donate some shoes. And You're they, reselling they them. Huh? You're reselling them. I donated them. I didn't get anything from them. Tomato, it. tomato. I gave them away for free. Like that's that's recent. Yeah, what it, I'm a, I'm hey, hold up. What is that? Yeah, listen, my, my 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 sneaker days are over. Nobody, no brand will ever send me nothing again after this one. What is that? It's a converse, no. Pick that shit back up. What is it? It's a converse. Uh, exactly. I, was, exactly. I don't know. I really converse. don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Converse been stepping it up. I have seen some of their platform shoes for girls. And hold they on, are you, actually you, you, you 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 like that shoe right there? I didn't say that one. I said <laughs> I, that Converse is stepping it up. <laughs> I'm, I'm just asking. That, that that shoe looked like Jeremy Scott woke up designing Converse. Mm. <laughs> that jar of grape jelly. It's like futuristic or something. I don't mm -hmm. know. It's giving me slime vibes. Yeah, that's that's not good. We, we, we done? That's Why is that shoe on your desk? Because <laughs> I put it there. Why? What do you wear with Why that? Why we got fight, man? No, I'm not. I'm just asking you a question. What was hey, your purpose of putting the shoe there? <laughs> Say what now? What was your purpose of putting that shoe there for what? So people could see it. I wanted why? to show you. I wanted to show you. Tell me why. What's your the thoughts Ivan on this converse? What are my thoughts on the shoe? <laughs> yeah. I thought they were unique. He's actually trying to get you to turn on the shoe so they won't send you another converse shoe again. <laughs> <laughs> but converse, that's later. Like you don't want to send him no more shoes. Nah, nah, fine. nah. Listen, I hope converse sends you everything <laughs> except for those. Like, yo, what Tell him like? to send me such. Nah, so yeah, they, yeah, they sent me these, call. and I was like, all right, that's what's up. Okay. And I did, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, when I first saw them, I was kind of like, oh, I don't know. And then they grew on me, so. You wore them yet? No. Are you gonna wear them? You gonna, you, you gonna wear them next week? I don't know if I can get away with it. So, I, oh, one of those so what, you, what would you, so you why ain't donate them? them? So, it's why you ain't donate them? Huh? Why you ain't donate them? Because actually, like, that's what I said. They grew on me. I don't know if I can get away with wearing them, but they grew on me enough to where I want to have them in my collection. They grow they grow any more. They'd be Barney. So, you wear ankle socks with them in shorts? Huh? You're gonna have ankle socks on and shorts? I, I haven't worn them yet for that reason. That's why I haven't worn them. Like, how do you uh, wear these? I don't know. That's what I don't know if I can get away with them, but they are unique Boy, enough. Like a track you got them grandma, my mama, my mom. They're no grandma, my mama, my mom. How about this? We've almost hit episode 300. Let's yeah. just do a giveaway. Someone call in, he'll autograph them for you. Know. And his favorite shoes. Hey. I mean, we trying to get people to watch guess. the show, right. not stop watching it. I guess. <laughs> I if anybody like accept, those. if anybody accepts that gift, forget about it. <laughs> no, they were unique. I'm like, I mean, what do you want me to say? They were unique, and I'm like, mm. I, I haven't had the urge the, to give the them. The top look like them cups the girls would walk around from uh, Fat Tuesdays on South Beach with the little long. <laughs> 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 <Yep>. <laughs> we, it's oh one more God. shoe. We go to the next shoe. We leave you alone, C's. <laughs> I ain't worried about. Nah, that. I don't. I really don't want to go nowhere else right now. But stay on that shoe until you can tell me what you like about that shoe. It's unique. I don't know what else to say. It's unique. It's you unique. like you like the quality. MJ, <laughs> you like the quality. I don't even say the like quality. The I mean, because it feel. It don't even feel like real leather. It feel like some type of. I, I don't know. It's not plastic, but yeah, I could tell you something. I, I could sit here and say, "Yo, C's is unique." I could also say, "You a nice guy. I know you got a good heart. You a genuine person. You got All a right. nice personality. You got a good demeanor. No, you ain't telling the... shit about the shoe except for fucking unique. It's unique. Well, I could like, say more. I, I could say you. I could say you're an arrogant what do you asshole. Want me to tell you? I could say a bunch of shit. What specifically what do you, you want me to tell you? What do you feel like I'm not telling what, you? What do you like about the shoe? It's unique. I don't know. What else, <laughs> I don't know what else Boy, to tell you. You dancing around? Yeah, I quit. That. I don't I know quit, what else to tell you. you, like, you I can't you even dancing for real. It's unique. Like what? You other look, words you looking you like, like now. Do you like the tongue? Hey, right hey Guru, he's trying to see what else like coming in the mail. I know, right? You like the tongue? <laughs> huh? You like the tongue? The it's whole unique. shoe is unique. Like the uh, shoe. It's unique. I'm trying to give you a way out. It's not one. It's not one specific thing. The shoe. 
as is overall is unique. It's just unique. MJ, I don't like its one piece MJ, construction. Can, can you tell your brother that shit was trash? Look, he know it. It's unique. <laughs> I want you again, to say. He liked them. Uh, it's you know, okay, you know what it is. You know what it is. You know sometimes a movie be so bad it's funny. It's bad, but it's funny. It's one of those things where it's so bad. You didn't say unique. it was bad. You said it was unique. Now you're telling me it's bad. I'm saying it. At I'm not first, gonna let I was you get like, away with this. My at brother. first, I'm listen. Not, I'm my not. first, my first reaction, my first reaction, because I didn't know they were sending them. All I know was I'm not gonna let I you get away box. with this, man. Listen, 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 <laughs> listen, Linda. <laughs> Look, I got the shoes. I opened the box, and I'm like, the fuck. That was my first reaction. There you go. There you that go. That was my first reaction. <laughs> right. And then, as they were just sitting there, I'm just kind of like, eh. Yeah, I ain't had the heart to donate them. I was like, these are unique. You have know, you whatever. picked out any outfit to wear with them? Like, I what do honestly, you have? I haven't even thought about great, them. Great question. I didn't think about them. <laughs> I didn't think about them until this morning when I was like, what shoes am I going to And I already knew Mayor, this part of the reason why I brought them is because I knew he was going to be on the show. I'm going to reference knew, this next time I get attacked. Okay, cool. I'm saving this in the vault. <laughs> no, I mean, cool. I knew you you should save show. it in the vault because he's dancing. Ain't nobody dancing. dancing. Listen. You're looking like is. Victor Cruz in the end zone. Mm -hmm. I feel like a right? nice Listen, track. I knew you was going to be in the show. I knew there was going to be a hot chance. That's not the reason you brought. That's not the reason you brought. I brought the shoes here on purpose. Why do you think? Why do you think? Wait, wait, wait. Time out, time out. Yo, that you is not the reason you brought. Do you honestly out think? Elon Musk wait, wait, wait. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Y'all know me well enough to know. You think I brought this shoe on here thinking that y'all was going to think these were dope? You said it's unique. I said it was unique. I didn't think you guys were going to think they were dope. Oh. I brought them here on purpose. I knew this was going to be a conversation. I already knew. Content at its finest. Between you and Guru, I between you and Guru, I know these were going to get brought up. Big purple iridescent shoes sitting on the desk. There's no way nobody talks about this shoe. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, I was looking at it when I came in like, wow. Right. Like, I, <laughs> so I, I knew it was going to be a conversation. I already knew. Like, this is not mm. a surprise so I'm just over here trying to think about what you going to wear with that. <laughs> Nothing. I'm not going to wear it. I'm going to get you. I'm just saying, like, they just sitting up there for show? Yes. Literally. I knew they were wow. gonna, so they <laughs> grew on you, but they was I got the no, shoes. No, no, MJ. MJ, they sitting there because they're unique. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I got the shoes. Didn't know what to do with them. I knew you was coming on the show. I knew Guru was going to bring it up. I know between the two of you, y'all was going to talk shit. Here we are having a show. I don't talk shit. I can report the news. I tell you what I see. The magic of making the show. show. Do they glow Content. in the dark? I did. I just huh? tell you Do they what glow I... in the dark? No. No, no, no. They look like they can be reflected. At least I don't know. They, I glow, in the, they glow in the day. <laughs> I don't know what they are. I don't know if they his permethazine converses. I don't know if they his Ivan, his Ivan Ooze weapons from the Power Rangers movies. The joy but, of making content, everybody. But there he got go. so, he got solar ah. panels. He got solar panels, so it, it powers his house. So I'm all for it. All green energy. Converse owe you a converse owe you a check and a half. Hey, let that happen. <laughs> um, but enough about me, though, right? Uh, they got the Nike women's Air Zoom type cell pink university gold signal blue. And mind you, all these shoes are coming out soon within the next couple of weeks. So heads up. Um, this women's shoe, soon as easy. Come on, easy. I got to yell at somebody. Yeah, uh, what's that? Well, I mean, I'm still in. in. When they try. <laughs> so they, 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 they grabbed the they grabbed a little tiny Saka vibe in the back. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Yeah, I got a pair of shoes. I forgot which one. You know how Nike like. do. They see something that works and then they just put it on everything. So it's like hot sauce. Did you say you'll work with these, though? I can freak them, but I, I don't. And then they can be done. Something can be done with, but no. MJ, as long as you don't wear them with Adidas track pants, we good nah, to go. We ain't, ain't going to do that one. Actually, I don't <laughs> like these at all. You don't like them no more? <laughs> no. You don't Not like them? I'm looking you... close up, like, eh, I don't know. She changed her mind. I just on. got that profile image. I needed to see him like out out the box. Yeah, right I don't know, cause it's like that little sprinkle at the bottom. I don't know. It looked like they comfortable though. So. Yeah, they got that what zoom pods in the front. Yeah, they're not like the aqua blue so. <laughs> the blue is cute. Yeah, so the ladies like it, so that's all that matters. That's that's uh, what counts. You can't you can't get our opinion on those. No. Nope. Uh, the next shoe. Yes, we can because your lady might have a mom. That's cool. If, uh, she if, got my la if, my, if my lady, went, if my <laughs> lady wearing the track no pants, then she out the door. <laughs> she ain't my lady no more. <laughs> uh, the next shoe we got the Nike SB Blazer Mid. I'm a, mm. I'm a big pack. fan of the bottom one. This yeah, I like the bottom one. The black one. Uh, I mean, I don't hate it. The bottom one is yeah, unique. It's unique. I could live with those. Those are good. Yeah, I'm gonna cop cool. these. The bottom pair. At least I think these sure. drop in July, by the way. So heads up for that. Uh, this next shoe drops sometimes this summer, and I was gonna ask you about this too. I don't know if you had anything to do with this. You got the Nike Air Max 97 OG SP Puerto Rico. 
Now these are like silver bullets, I, minus yeah. the flag on the Because I'm top. Puerto Rican, I gotta have something to do with the shoe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with you? They run all exactly. they run all the Puerto Rican ideas to you. No, uh, the shoe the shoe just like some no, silver the, bullets. The Puerto Rico mm -hmm. Air Force One, they called me to verify that the switch was on. I wish they called you before they made that backwards flag. The, the well, that's what happened. They <laughs> called they, the backwards flag. They called me. So I I'll give you a quick story, right? So, uh, remain nameless. One of the guys that was on the shoe that did mm -hmm. the shoe, he called me like last minute and he was just like yo i need a favor i'm like what's up he's like you got the original puerto rico's from 2001 i'm like yeah what's up i got a desk stock there he was like can you send me pictures i'm like all right cool i'm running around the city taking care of my day he called me again he's like yo bro can you send me the pictures i'm like yo homie i haven't heard from you in like five years um i'm gonna get you the pictures once i get home he calls me again he was like yo i really need the pictures I'm like, you know what it's nike let me do him a favor i stop what i'm doing i go home i send him detailed pictures of the shoe i don't hear nothing back from him I think a day or two days later, somebody noticed. So this must have happened before, but I found out later. I'm not going to sit here and say that I was the reason. Somebody on on Instagram or something, I think that was the story. They pointed out that the flag was backwards. Mm -hmm. So I guess they wanted to, they, they didn't have an original pair, so I'm assuming they hit me for verification. So when I sent them the pictures, I never heard nothing else back, right? So then I hit him, and I'm like, yo, can I get a pair? <laughs> and he said, no. Yo, at least send me a pair, bro. I, I look out for you. Send me a pair. I didn't, you know, he didn't send me a pair. But it's surprising that they didn't I, have a pair to reference. I was shot there. Yeah, I mean, listen, they must have just they must have just went off pictures and wherever the picture, the flag must have looked backwards in the picture, and that's the way they ran with it. But um, so that's basically what happened on my side, and obviously somebody pointed it out, and the shoe never came out. I wound up getting two pair though. I think size in London or one of them stores dropped them, and I wound up clicking on it and buying it, and they wound up sending it to me. Right. So they didn't right. cancel my order or nothing. So I wound up getting them, and I was happy I got them. But yeah, it's definitely it was fucked up what happened. But it was an honest mistake. Nobody could sit here and it was an honest mistake. Right. But, but I was um, mad that homeboy. I ain't speak to homeboy since I sent him the pictures. <laughs> well, maybe he might send you a pair of knowledge you on the show. He'll be back he in five years or something. That's it. That's it. It's been five years and they need something else. Now, I'm but no, this shoe is crazy, though. Like, cause, like, I'm, body, I'm bodies with a smile on my face. I got no problem body. Because they just look no like silver body. bullets, literally with the smallest Puerto Rican flag at the very top of the time. And I, I mean, that's like, what it is. But I mean, they, they, no, I just feel like they could have uh, did more. Like, if you're gonna do a, if you're gonna do a shoe, I guess it's supposed to be dedicated to Puerto Rican or Puerto Rico or. I mean, it's a Puerto Rican Day parade is in, Puerto Rican Day parade is in June. I mean, they probably they were probably didn't they know did if they were gonna do something. Mm. You're right. They could over everybody. We always feel they could do more. I mean, I'm glad they didn't do as much as they did on that Converse. <laughs> 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 I'm glad they didn't do that. But nah, listen, the silver bullets a popular shoe. It's an iconic shoe, and you know, with an iconic Puerto Rican flag on it. Why not? I wonder what the, uh, what the box book. gonna look like. Mm. All, that's a great like question. The presentation, the box. Oh yeah, yeah that's a box. Question. Like the Dominican Air Force One, like the Delo Mio and all that stuff. They yep. had to, they had this different cool box. box. Yep. I think the, I, but I think the Air Max, the Air Max One that came out for Puerto Rico for Puerto Rican Day Parade last year or the year before, it had a regular box. It had a regular box. Maybe they do something cool on this one. Well, we'll see. That'll be uh, dope. September. We got the Air Jordan Retro One KL Storm Blue. It's funny because the uh, the Chicago's just dropped this is early this week, and I guess everybody loves Jordan Man, and KO's. So on. look, I'm, I'm six not a KO. Work in the Locker. I remember the KO sitting on the show. Dude, sitting like sitting, canvas collecting dust. Don't play with me. I don't know how many times I just I had to RTD nah. that shoe because it just sat. Nobody touched it. Along with Jordan One mids mm -hmm. and the Jordan One low OGs, I got my black and red ones for like thirty nine dollars. I'm so, still like, hearing people argue what KO stands for. Are we saying knockoff, knockout? Knockoff. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah, it's knockoff. Okay. I mean, I never knew. Like, it was. Like, Jump, it was Jumpman is saying knockoff. I'm hearing some people say knockout like a boxing reference. No, it's okay. knockoff because it was a, a lower priced shoe so it can be more affordable, you know? Like a LeBron and you got the soldiers, like, kind of like that. Like, oh, the Kobe's so and the was... Mamba Furies. Like, I think I, you I should just... explain to the people what I think you should explain to the people what RTV mean. A lot of people don't know that if you don't work for a brand. Oh, yeah. Or... Return to <laughs> business. So if, you're, if, exactly. your shoe, if your shoes sit in your store for a while, and so what Nike do is send them back to us. We'll give you a credit on your next invoice or whatever. And then once Nike get those shoes, they might send them to another retailer or they might just send them to the outlet and let them. Send them know. to the outlets, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. But no, it's, it's funny. All the KO love all of a sudden. Like, I'm still. Still not a big fan of the KOs. Um, they wouldn't do as well without a classic colorway, though. Like, that's definitely help, helping with the wave. Yeah. I, but it's, it's, it's funny because I, I, I went on StockX or whatever just to see what the prices were going for, and it was going for like 400 plus. I'm like, wow. What's the retail on them? Like, one, probably 150, 160. 
Like sure, that. you be that high. Y'all really about to say I go, I go eBay for all my stuff. <laughs> Stock X and all this top tier. I go to eBay to get the true prices. <laughs> Let me find out eBay just sent you a check. Uh, they need to. I'm the only sneaker influencer so far that didn't get a, that didn't get a check from eBay. Just for the so, hey, hey, you not, uh, you're not I'm waiting. Are we waiting. <laughs> my purchase history is my eBay search game. Me, MJ could vouch for that. I was about so. to say, look, I got three more days. I'm waiting on them 16. <laughs> so I mean, I hosted an event for sure eBay years ago with Josh Vides, but that's probably it. I was. I almost wore 16s today. Yeah, that's ridiculous. But no, I'm not a KO guy. I mean, Definitely either. I, I, was just, I, I don't. I mean, I understand some people like them. I just didn't understand the whole world liked them the way they did. Yeah. It's right. It's kind of getting a wolf off the. Um, let's say this perfect example. You got Biggie, right? Mm -hmm. And then Shine and Gorilla Black got attention because of they sounded like Biggie. I would say that's the. <laughs> Is AJ that Corner, that yep, that's the same. I won't, thing I, I, I won't, I won't let you get away with the Shine reference. I let Shine, you well, Shine can rap, but Shine, but people, Shine he caught Shine attention. I would say Gorilla Shine. Black was definitely. A yeah, he could good rap. He, he caught people's attention because <laughs> to me, Shine ain't signed nothing like Biggie. I don't know what anybody. Right, I didn't, I didn't he hear. Definitely it. did. I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. He had that low voice, but it definitely wasn't like. I didn't Biggie. hear it, but but it Gorilla Black, he went. Yeah, I was gonna say he pulled out the Biggie. He pulled out the Biggie handbook. Yeah, so. and <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> it worked for it really, a second. Really didn't work. It worked for a hot second. Yeah, um, later this fall, we got the Clot and Sakai Special Edition Nike uh, LD Waffle. That was straight. That was cool. That was all right. I don't got mm. no beef with him. I am. Mm. I'm, yeah. Listen, I'm a Clot fan. I've been a Clot fan for years. Um, is it the greatest looking shoe on the planet? No. To to every time, but every time you take that color blocking right there and you add it to something. And I hate using this term because I'm not a fan of it. But for nostalgic purposes, I get it. Yeah, I was about to say. Right. Get it. And I hate using that nostalgic place. shit because I'm not, I'm not a guy that I'm not going to go buy a pair of 85s just to say I have them when mm -hmm. I had them in 85. I'm not a guy that's going to go buy this just to say I have. I, I don't do that. Right. But this right here, I understand the mesh and the mash, and I think it works. And it does look good on this color. It, do, it does look good on this silhouette. I'm not going to You don't understand why people collect, though? I mean, that's part of the reason why people collect. Well, I mean, where? But what I'm saying is, I don't want to buy a pair of 85s now that I can't put my feet in just to say I have. Oh, okay, I get that. Like, uh, you know I'm, saying, I'm not gonna go back. I'm not gonna go back and buy a pair of 85s right now. Is what I'm saying. Oh, I'm just I not gonna do it. I understand. If you can't wear them, gonna, then yeah. Nah, what I'm like, I don't want to look at them. It's the reason I got rid of my whole collection because I didn't want to look at them. I can't look right. at them no more. They didn't fit. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But, so you can't. I don't. I just don't. I don't see that thing. But for this right here, I get it because it's now. It's in the present, and it's actually a shoe that could be bought and worn, and and I get it. You know what I'm saying? I was, I'm gonna say this too. I don't know if this is, but as often as I see the Sakai models, like is this still a, is this still for like a collaboration? Because collaborations happen like every now and then, right? I feel like I see these damn near on a monthly basis. I feel like Nike leans coast. heavily on collaborations now. Well, yeah. You used but to it get them like, sporadically. Now it's darn near like clockwork. First and fifteen. This, feels, this don't even feel like a collaboration <laughs> as often as it comes out. Like it feels like I see. Different well, colors. there was some daybreakers too that had a similar looking sole. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's probably what it is. Yeah. yeah. I just feel like I've seen this shoe multiple times at different colors to the point where it feels like an actual Nike model now. You know, I'm a big fan of their Dunk Blazer hybrids more so than these, the Waffle the, Racer, the whatever Blazers, we're calling them. The bla bla Blazers are dope. I wouldn't mind seeing a Blazer, in, I wouldn't mind seeing a Blazer in that colorway right there. This would be dope. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they'd be able to freak a Blazer like that. The Blazers are dope. I got every Blazer that came out so far. I like the Blazers. So last two shoes we got are both Dunks. Uh, the first one, and both released later this year, we got the Nike Dunk Low South Korea. Which, nice. I'm hard. I'm smooth. Oh, smooth. Yeah. Nice. You know what's good. crazy though? Like as far as like all the silhouettes or sneakers that's been dropping, um, I like the colorways that we get is fine. But I just feel like I don't know. It's limited. Like I'm only working with one shoe, so I'm gonna just slap like 50 colorways on the shoe and oh, release it this year. And that's like, what I, right. you yeah. know, I'm I'm tired of it. Same shoe, different color. Yeah. Yep. I mean, yeah. Unless I'm getting small hey. white forces. And I don't care. <laughs> so you, so you, so you, 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 you tired? You tired of seeing seventy five? I mean, I'm dunk cooled lows. off. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm out of it They're right now. They're giving dunk lows the Jordan one treatment. Like, yeah, yep. we're about to well, well, I mean, pretty, pr pretty, pretty soon they're gonna be in every foot locker across the country because you know what happens after they do the sneakers app, after they do the Nike, after they do the boutiques, they, they just bastardize them straight to, straight to foot locker after that. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, Full Locker had a couple pair. I got my son uh, Black and Royal joints from Full Locker. Yeah, so you're gonna you, you're gonna see that whole way. That, that whole way is probably gonna ride through 2022. It's gonna be like, 
if, if Nike sticks to that model that they used to stick to all the time, then that's that's what's next for that shoe. They are. Yeah, because uh, that's why they're still making up tempos because of season. <laughs> man, Nike's going to do it, man. Yes, you did. And then we got the Nike Dunk Low Barcelona, which, once again, is another Dunk Low. Um, easy. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, my He's man's like, on his own time. My man's yeah. on his own time today. <laughs> yeah, these cool. I'm not liking them. They remind me of the Kobe Six, the colorway, but it's cool. Yeah. Oh, they miss my. Yeah, I don't. Nah, they they decent. Coming. I just think it's too many colorways dropping for one. This sneaker. looks like it might be an SB right. though. I it mean, is. they drop a whole bunch of colorways because they know you ain't. Gonna, you gonna have a 99.9 percent chance of not getting one. Okay, all right. That's why I've been hitting lately. Like, Nike's doing you the favor. Yeah. yeah. You know, nice. speaking of Nike dunks being limited, on the sneakers app, they only dropped about 2,000 pairs of those red mushroom dunks. Okay, so that's... Yeah. So the SB allocation is slim to none, if anything, on the app. Yeah, so, I, how do y'all find this information out? You guys are good. That's dunks. Dunks be, dunks be on it. The, he's uh, tied to the black market. The <laughs> so he's I, I'm just trying to figure out how y'all be finding this information out. He's our right Donatello. Just, like, if we were Ninja Turtles, he's our Donatello. Yeah, you good. I feel like what uh, I was saying. What I, what I was saying, Dunks, is I don't understand. I mean, I understand. How do you get? How do you guys get this information? Like, how do you know they only drop two thousand pair? Like, that's mostly, a lot of me that you know it. Uh, Discord monitors. We got like spiders, crawlers. You could see on the website what's dropping, when it drops. Like uh, Caesar was talking about, certain shoes only dropping on desktop. We could monitor just Nike.com. We could monitor just sneakers app. Uh, whenever oh, they, see. whenever they say, oh, uh, exclusive access or like this will drop, the toy no fifteen minutes early. Um, there's a lot of sneakers employees on Discord and a lot of people who work for Nike playing both sides, kind of leaking information as well. Oh, okay. uh, you guys, you guys work too. Well. You guys are sneaker guys for real. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so out of the loop. Damn. Can't fight fair if you want to win. Yeah, I'm washed. Well, I got you just, you just, Amy, you just reminded me that I'm officially washed. That's too no, much. It, I, well, I'm, I'm kind of glad we're on this topic because these next two things I kind of want to talk about real quick. One, um, I don't know if anybody saw the video recently i think it got posted like last week but there was a young man who was disabled and was talking about how he wasn't able to oh, yeah, get the flies yeah and you know the resellers are snatching those shoes up and flipping them for like stupid amounts of money yeah um i'm just talking about just how fucked up the game is where like here's a shoe that was specifically made for disabled people and it used to be like i was talking to somebody from nike not that long ago it used to be a time where we self-regulated right like you was you, we used to shame people nike didn't go out there and shame people for wearing fakes we did we did all that right and so now um you know they come up with a shoe like that like the fly East go where once again it's specifically made so that people who have disabilities are able to be able to put on the shares easily um, easily and resellers are snatching those up like it used to be a code now i don't feel like one exists anymore so I mean, there's no honor amongst thieves, and ever since COVID, like, certain items just morally or ethically shouldn't be sold, like, face masks shouldn't be sold, or, like, any necessary items shouldn't be resold, but you see people are, I mean, you see people are scrambling to, to save gas in containers right now, like, right. and not even, like, people just aren't thinking properly, and, like, reselling ticket scalping, it's been around, it's going to happen, but it's right. oversaturated, blown out of proportion right now, and people are taking advantage of every aspect of it, and it's unfortunate. I don't think that pisses me off is uh because i saw some people in the comments like well nike should have made them limited i agree i agree nike should have made more pairs however just because they made them limited doesn't force you to buy them you know what i'm saying like you still have control over maybe, maybe they are gonna maybe they are gonna make a lot like more pairs. i remember I wanted, I, to get so. a pair. I wanted to get a pair for my mother my mother's 80 to be 83 my mother be 83 years old Right. And I took her to Nike Town the other day, and Jesus Christ, the lady went crazy on me. She bought four pairs of sneakers for six hundred eighty dollars. <laughs> we were fighting in the we were fighting in the middle of Nike Town. Um, <laughs> she's different, but um, you know, she has a hard time putting her shoes on. Right. Like she has a hard time lacing them up. My mom's, you know, she's she's you know she's she's short. She's a little stubby, and she um, you know, she has a hard time bending down, putting on her shoes, yeah. and she's eighty three years old. So I right. figured, you know, she'd be able to you know pop those up, step in them, and you know maybe they they'll help to get good for elderly people too. And I knew when I seen the craze, I'm like, I ain't got no shot of getting this. I'm not gonna call a favor in for these. Right. But um, I mean, it is what it is. Hopefully they'll make a lot more pit. doing that? Like, what are, who are you reselling these to at this high price and they the for disabled, disabled people? people. No, they, they, will, they, will re, they will resell it to the same family member that has a disabled cousin or a disabled yep. friend mm -hmm. that will buy them a present for their birthday and come through with the greatest present in the world. Y'all wanna do this for my nephew who's disabled. I wanna get him this shoe. They'll go pay the 500. I don't know what they're selling for. I'm just throwing numbers out. For the right. four, five hundred, six hundred, whatever it's going for. What's the retail on the shoe? Uh, I think it was like one forty or something like that. It was relatively cheap. 
Mm. Okay, so you know, and is, is it, what's it going for? Five, six hundred? Man, I think I've seen a pair go for like seven. I'm like, it's Yo. a cool concept, but they should be made to order. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, that's, like that's that. been a topic of discussion on whether Nike, Nike should do pre-orders or something like that. But, I, but you got to prove you got to sit there and, and, and go through hoops and prove that you're disabled, or if you have a, you have somebody that's disabled in your family. That's a whole not, that's no, a no, whole no. I'm saying thing. pre-orders in general. Like people are just saying Nike to kind of combat bots and all that other stuff. They should do pre-orders in general. But with this shoe, I don't know, man. Like I, I'm a firm believer in karma. Like I really do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like whatever you put out there, you get back, and. I would just feel some type of way if I bought all the, bought up all these shoes, knowing that people really needed these shoes, mm-hmm. and then tried to flip it well, on. Let me like, let me like this is this is a, just another sample size of one of the many things wrong with the sneaker community now is that it used to be gatekeepers, right? So like I said this many times, when you used to want to say, "Oh, I'm a sneaker person," we actually what forces you got? What Air Max 95s you got? Oh, where you get them from? Where you cop from? Like, but nowadays with social media and everything, like. The sneaker game blew up, but it came at a cost. And when you got, I remember back in the day, resellers were like almost like the Wizard of Oz. You went to them when you couldn't get no other shoe. It was like a novelty. Now anybody can become a reseller. And when you cloud the game, there goes the morals, there goes certain things out of the game. And it just, and it's all the reselling platforms. Now it's unfortunate. My mom, my grandmother wanted a pair of shoes and then my mom's a nurse. She works in the hospital and she likes to take, you know, all her garments off at the door. And she like, I want to take these pop these off, you know, so I want to bring them to my house, but I can just get them and go, you know what I'm saying? And it's just sad that I'm like, my, I like, I have to go try to see if I can go on stock eggs and look for you. And it's sad, and for even outside of her, the people who really need them beyond her need, mm-hmm. and it's sad. But these are just one of the many things that are wrong with the sneaker community is the amount of greed that comes in it. Yeah. Yeah, and I. But it's too much. It, go ahead, Jenna. Go ahead. I was just just gonna say, just piggybacking off last week, I just do feel like you know, it's it's our job too as a consumer to stop these antics. Like you go have sometimes you gotta be like, look, we're not we're not gonna buy them. So you gonna hold on to those five hundred dollars shoes for yep. the next three years until yep. you go down because that's just it's not right. Just capitalism. Sorry. I understand all that, but you can't stop. It's, the masses is too crazy right now. You mm-hmm. can't stop it. I consider myself one of the pioneers of sneaker stuff. I consider myself there. I'm not going to sit here and say that. I, I know I have a voice. I know I have a platform. I know I have things. But you can't stop the masses anymore. It's just too much. You can't stop that. I mean, if we got a president of the United States. We got a secretary of state. We got this. We got that. There's still crime all over the world. There's still this. There's still that. There's right. still all kind of things. There's still racism. There's still all kind of things all over the world. It's not no matter how hard we try. We're supposed to keep trying. But no matter how hard we try, there's always going to be stuff that sips through the cracks. And, yeah, and you know, as gatekeepers, it, the community is too big. And, it's, and, and there's so many people that are not even in the community now that know they can capitalize off the community. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, a lot, a lot Nobody, of people from I, I, Nike I, I, I give you a perfect example. Hold on, I'll give you a perfect example. Nobody on this planet is stockbrokers, right? Right. We all bought this motherfucking Bitcoin and Doge and all this bullshit thinking we're going to turn four or five hundred dollars into a million dollars. Right. Right? Right. We don't know shit. We're not stockbrokers. Right? So you, you, it's right. going to slip through the cracks either way. So, you know what I'm saying? So there's right. no there's no police in that situation. Well, you just got to be have a heart. You got to have a heart and we want to do it. Okay, Doug, I'm sorry. Media, Discord, Reddit is kind of just exposing how easy it is to catch a short squeeze or it's just enlightening the public at what hedge funds are already doing. And a lot right. of people, mm-hmm. even the younger generation, is treating sneakers or shoes like individual stocks or mm-hmm. investment mm-hmm. platforms. Um, yeah. Yeah. And with that in mind, everyone's goal is more so profit or money versus keeping this community together. Right. Or I was referencing back in the day we had Nike Talk. A lot of those guys disappeared and very few have transferred over to Instagram. And even some of them are just secretly reselling and keeping it to themselves because they've seen what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. No, so one minute, it makes sense. I mean, but one part minute, of the reason, percent. part of the reason why, you know, like. I mean, but you got the freedom. Like, all right, let's say you buy a $20,000 pair of lobsters for like 3K, right? right? You never wear them 10 years ago by, it's, it's worth 20K. You got the right to sell it if you want to. You know right. what I mean? Like the game blew up. Right. You you yeah. made an investment. You go buy whatever you want with that. And I don't hate someone for doing that. Right. But then there's like the others. I always compare it to like the X Men. There's the good guys and the bad guys. And we all have the same goal. We just go about it differently. Different ways. Yeah. I, I hear that. I guess to his point about the gatekeepers and stuff. And I the part of the, I hate to say like I consider our show part of that, but I think part of what we try to do is we try to speak on things. And you're right. You're not going to police the whole community because right. it's way too big now at this point. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, it's like it's like one traffic cop trying to stop all traffic. It's not going to happen, <laughs> right? But you could do something. You know what I'm saying? And a little bit helps. And so hopefully we're able to have this conversation, which leads to other people having this conversation. And while it might not stop it totally, 
it might stop. If we could just stop one person, like to me, that is. It's what the, um, the crazy thing about it, the person or the one entity that can do the most to combat most of this reselling or put a chink in his armor are the brands mm-hmm. by producing. But, but that goes that goes that. So them not caring. Well, what, what, are the, what are the brands supposed to do? Break sell this down. Product, because I have, sell again, products. we all have we all have relationships with brands. The brands right? the brands end goal is to sell product. Exactly. They don't care who buys it and who sells it as long as it's out of their hands and they got the money for that transaction. They don't give a shit what happens. Right. So, that. so what are the, what are the brands supposed to do? Is what I'm asking, Google. Like I'm asking, oh, so, I'm so asking, what, you know, on, on, oh. on a straight dialect. Like, okay. Yeah. For, so, I guess from my vantage point, as a true person who, uh, true, I don't say collector, whatever, but as someone who works sneaker retails for ten to fifteen years and in the and management level, I feel like that their cop out is. Oh, we're not gonna make a whole bunch of shoes, but when we do, it doesn't sell. Well, there's other shoes that you make a whole bunch of that doesn't sell, that doesn't mm-hmm. have a demand, and you still make them. Yep. So, prime example, right? And this is like, will the, the the dunk situation? You could make more dunks, right? Because my thing is, the one person who spent five hundred dollars on one pair of dunks, they could have bought two or three dunks from you, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, like, that's that's one thing. So, you see, the demand is there. The resale market is the marketing gauge for you so you can say like okay we dropped this okay people want it we could up it in the morning that's the one thing the second thing is availability right so we in detroit we don't get a lot of stuff Man. so we have to lean on ebay and StockX to get a cloud or a soul fly joint or undefeated collab you know what i'm saying that's one and then another thing too is kids are getting to the sneakers it hurts my soul my son asked for a pair of kobe's a couple weeks ago couldn't find it had to search on ebay got him some lower marion kobe tens in his size right he's a 13 preschool yesterday he saw a nightwing video he want the Kobe draft days. I had to tell him that I couldn't get them because Nike didn't make the shoes. Not only for my son, his daughters can't wear Kobe's shoes because Kobe said, um, Nike said, well, Kobe's weren't really selling, but after his unfortunate demise and his passing, the demand went up. It's sickening, but it did. So therefore, you can have the demand now to make his shoes and to do a, his mm-hmm. legacy a disservice, a service rather, you make more pairs so the kids can carry on his legacy. Right. So, I mean, it's a multifaceted. I understand the business. We want to right. keep things limited so people can go crazy. But at it's some not even, point. I mean, let, let, me, let, let me stop you for one second. I want you to understand something. Mm-hmm. This is meetings that I've sat in years ago. Mm-hmm. Stuff that I, this is stuff that I know. I'm speaking mm-hmm. what I know. You put a pie up. You put a chart, right? Mm-hmm. And you do sneakers, mm-hmm. uh, tourists, athletes, this, that. Sneakerhead, mm-hmm. sneaker community mm-hmm. is the smallest chart. It's the smallest thing on the chart. And I've sat with Nike and I know this for a fact. I'm not saying they don't care about it, but I'm telling you what it is. Nike's going to have, at the times that I had this meeting, they're going to have 17,000 pair of shocks inside of Nike town because of tourism. So when, 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 when people from London and stuff fly in and the euro is stronger than the dollar and they buy these shoes and they take them back home and then tourists like to have these shoes and then athletes like to have these shoes and these are comfortability things and stuff like that. that these, limit, these Jordans and all that billion dollar company, billion dollar part of Nike's net worth, all of that stuff, strong percentage, it means nothing on that chart. Well, I mean, really I mean, so I've count. sat in those meetings, bro. No, I'm saying I, I believe you. I will say this though, Nike is also smart. It's not a, sh- and it's not a shot to the sneakerhead. That's oh, just the way to. We said that plenty. Yeah, we played. Right. We said that plenty of times on the show that sneaker culture, when you look at the grand scheme of things, is a niche. However, we influence. We are exactly we are one we, million. We, I agree with that. We yes. move the we move the needle, and Nike knows that. This is why there's a sneakers app for sneakerheads, and there aren't like an app for like uh, shots and pegs. You know, like uh, exactly. <laughs> so they so they know they know we move the needle. They know that. Uh, while sneaker culture might be a niche, we but how much are we really moving the needle if the chart, if the pie on right, the chart is so small? Because, the app, because, because it's, a, it's called a vocal minority, so it's like so that's that's how we operate, right? I and don't so, think making the app was to focus on sneakerheads. I think it was to actually try and prevent bots, which just didn't work, unfortunately. It was it was meant to do both, probably, but it's definitely it was definitely meant because they know he exists, and like I said, like I, we definitely influence things, and like I, and when I say move the needle, it's because like I said, we are a vocal minority. You know what I'm saying? So like black people. We're like we're a minority, yes. but yet we influence we influence culture, we influence music, <laughs> we influence fashion, art, we art, influence sports. fashion, we influence all that stuff, right? So one thing percent, right? So that, so that's how we, that's, so that's how it operates, right? And so uh, they know that, and so I think the problem becomes for me is when you got a fan base, a dedicated fan base, 
uh, like sneakerheads, I think you have to think long term. Yeah, right now it's selling. But what ends up happening is, like to Guru's point, when you make so many releases that are limited and like that, people take enough L's, they're going to stop caring. Mm-hmm. They're going to get jaded. They're going to fall off. Now, it's not happening right now because, they're, you know, hype. But at some long term, if people got to go years in between W's on the sneakers app, why bother? I've heard a lot of people say, you know what, I just deleted it off my phone. Another problem, and this is a problem that Nike will even acknowledge, fakes. <clears throat> Part of the reason fakes have become big is because you created such a demand for the product that when they can't get it from you, they're going to get it from somebody else, especially if it looks good enough. And Nike hates that. So it's like, what do you do? I mean, is, is that really part of, is that, do, do, we don't accept that in the culture. You're not catching, I'm not, no, me, I'm not letting you, a friend of mine wear a fake. Oh, I'm, I'm not letting a friend of mine wear a fake. I'm you're not making my point. anybody. You're making yeah, my point yeah. though, because once again, what I say earlier, we used to self-regulate. You're right. Me, you, Guru, MJ, we used to be like, nah, like we would see somebody walking around with some fakes and we knew well, I'm not walking up to nobody and be like, yo, your shit's no, 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 fake. No, 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 they just like, trying to look good. They exactly. just trying to look like they got it. You know how many times, like, so we got this thing we do now. We call it uh, sneaker review reviews, where we review other people's sneaker reviews, right? We just react to it. You know how many videos now we see of UAs and people are proud of it, like, don't even care no more. It's just like, you know what? And it used to be a time where you, you know, you felt ashamed that you did it either because right. you didn't know or because you didn't have it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Now nah, they don't care. They, they like, they care. look the same. <laughs> I right. ain't paying uh, 2000 for these. So the, and Nike will acknowledge that that's the a problem. Thing. That's one of their biggest problems. You know, I know I talk to them too. So you, know, that's, you, that's you talk to them more. You talk to them more than I do. <laughs> all my, all all my meetings Nike, are old meetings. Not only Nike, it's, it's different brands too. Like you yeah. got Adidas. Exactly. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. the other day, like we ain't gonna say where, but I went to go buy a pair of Yeezys because I heard, all right, they just hit the store. I get the box. I'm like, y'all got a contract. Why is it a stock X tag in this box? But I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I'm investigating, I'm looking, I'm, you know, doing my little thing, and I'm like, these That's ain't right. it. That's From a right. local That's store, though, so it, it's so bad to where mm-hmm. they looked it so good, but I knew they wasn't it. That's, That's crazy. Right. That's hilarious. And the I, game and I, messed up. I've yeah. heard of that, too, where people will buy the, um, so they'll buy a pair of, uh, of, you know, UAs or fakes or whatever, and then they'll buy a real pair, and then yeah. they return the fake and get the money back. Oh, I got guys that work at StockX tell Scoundrels. me all kind of stuff. That is hilarious. Yeah. All kind of stuff. That's crazy. I want to ask you this too. I got, um, I got guys that I got guys that literally work at StockX. They crack your bro. They crack me up. Somebody will go buy somebody, and they'll go buy the most expensive shit. They'll go buy an off white. They'll go buy off white four. Go buy the fake joint. Send the shit back in the real box. Send the fake one back in the real box. Right. Le- le- legitimately get their money. Yo, this, I see. I don't seen all kind of crazy shit. I don't seen it at all. Like yeah. I don't heard every story. Seen everything. It's disgusting. We got March coming on soon, but I really wanted to get to this. Uh, Marcus Jordan said there's another trophy room collab in the way. Uh, an article written by Brandon Richard for Complex. Uh, recently, Michael, Marcus Jordan took to Twitter to share news saying that he's met with the Jordan design team about his next project. Uh, back in February, an industry insider said that employees at Nike and Jordan brand are aware of the allegations against trophy room, but are choosing not to speak out due to the store's familial ties and the larger consequences that could come down as a result. Marcus has denied the allegations, instead blaming early league pairs of the uh, Jordan ones that came out earlier this year on thieves stealing them from the distribution center. As of now, the model concept of release, or uh, the model or concept of release date for the next trophy Air Jordan has not been revealed. So I got a, I got a problem with this. It ain't got nothing to do with Marcus Jordan, you know, having another collaboration, even though that's problematic in itself. Who would have knew a rumor had this shoe would have been attached to a rumor? Right, right. <laughs> that whole problem, that whole situation is problematic <laughs> in itself. My issue is, and he continues to double down on this, is his deflection of the the pairs that leaked to people at the distribution center in Memphis. And my problem with that is, you putting those people, you throwing those people under the bus mm-hmm. in order to save yourself. Those people getting paid, what, $14 an hour to ship out our shit it ain't got nothing to do, you know. Come on, and, how did that and, many and, pairs leave the distribution center and nobody knows? Like, let's let's, on, be, let's be for real. If he was going to do that, with signed thank you cards. Thank God. <laughs> like well, this is the thing about it. If he was going to make the allegation, he should that should it would have worked better on the uh, say maybe the fire red fires, right? Yeah. 
because those come from Memphis and they go to the stores or whatever. So he could have might have got away with that. But this is a collaboration. So once the shoes are made, whatever get here, they sent directly to you, mm -hmm. right? Because it's a collaboration and they'll save some for the Nike sneakers app. All of yours magically went to mysterious places and was not available before the sneakers app dropped. And then the, the sneakers app was after his pairs got stolen yeah remember, yeah we was able to see the list of mm -hmm. how many pairs and how many were according available. to the courtesy yeah. of the dark web our it department right here we was able <laughs> to see what what went on the sneakers app and it was less than a thousand what pairs correct oh, right okay so less if it was twelve thousand pairs made I'm and only a thousand sure. allegedly was on the sneakers app where did the other eleven thousand go right right somebody grabbed them off the truck and they from what we were told they were getting sold for like 1400 to 12 to 1400 dollars a pop times that by eleven thousand, it's almost 16 million dollar back door right i think mayor from he's either in shock <laughs> he's in such disbelief but no i i mean while well, we get him situated uh i think we got mosh coming up i think he's either on or he's there goes all right i'm back yeah i'm back okay. so i lost i lost us was it was it me or was it every was it the whole thing uh no it, might have, it was just you uh, okay, what part did you last here? Yeah, you, you gotta get that wild cable upgraded. <laughs> Not wild. <laughs> uh, listen, Mandala. Um, uh, what part did you hear last? It's the beginning of the mic. I, I, I lost it on. The, um, I lost it when Guru said the uh, rumor, rumor has a shoe. Oh, so, okay. So no. So my point was, my beat because I was saying that him getting another collaboration so soon after that whole controversy is problematic within, within itself. My yeah. issue with him is this doubling down on no it was the guys at the distribution center so you blaming people getting paid 10 14 dollars an hour you know menial jobs to work at the distribution center to save your ass and it's just like yo like take like take i mean let's be real okay. what are they gonna fire you your dad he his name is on the brand they're never going to get rid of you they just said it in here like a lot of employees are even scared to talk about it because of the connection to michael jordan what are they going to do get rid of michael jordan like all Michael Jordan got to do is just make a phone call. There's another collaboration. So, so to sit here and blame everyday people for your lack of character, you know, your backdooring, right. to me pisses me off because so, it's like, yo, like they don't deserve that. They don't. Like, how does that many pairs get stolen from a distribution? So this, no what I was saying before you got disconnected is the, his allegation on that Memphis warehouse would have worked if it was a general release. Fire Red Fives, right. Raging Bulls. He might could have got away be with hard that because they, they have to come through there to come to you. But this is a collaboration. So it's mm -hmm. sent. Uh, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I see his Matambo. No, sir. Sorry to cut you off. Mm -hmm. what, 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 whatever he did, he did. Not got nothing to do with it. Shout to Marcus Jordan. They send me shoes. <laughs> I'm cool. I, I ain't gonna lie. On it. He, <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't bite my tongue, bro. I don't bite my tongue. I don't give two fucks if I got a trophy room or not. By the grace of God, I could afford to go buy one if I wanted one. Let me explain something to y'all. I know Soulfly when they did their crazy release in Miami. All the all the friends and family pairs got stolen. They all got stolen out the warehouse. I know this for a fact. I know a million pair of Sakai's that got stolen out of the warehouse. I know a million pair of general releases that get stolen out of the warehouse. There's a problem in the, in the Memphis warehouse. There's an insane problem in the Memphis warehouse. <laughs> Nobody wants to admit to it. Nobody wants. I've seen it. The streets talk. I know people have hit you up and said, yo, I got pairs of such and such from such and such. If, you don't, if not, you're lying. If not, you're lying. There is an abundance of thievery going on in the Memphis warehouse. Nobody's now, saying, but, oh, we're not saying that it doesn't whether, matter. Whether, whether they took his or not, whether, no, no, but whether it's, uh, <laughs> it's 12,000 or 15,000 pair of a shoe or 6,000 of another pair or whatever the case may be, I understand. I'm not, I'm not saying he ain't do what everybody's saying he did. If he did, he did it. Ain't what you gonna do? Well, that's my problem. Until, cause until he gets enough, caught, he gets caught. There's another right. circle. I'm not, we all know that they still We all think I mean, he they, did it, right? Listen, we all, listen, we all, you know, we I all, agree with we, you. We all bet that OJ did it, right? Right. Okay. You know I think he know he did. I think he know he did. That's another story. But <laughs> no, but at the Guru's point, the Guru's point, this, there's a problem with stealing everywhere. They do it at all the stores. They do it at the warehouses. They do it everywhere. My problem, there's enough circumstantial evidence to connect the dots. They, you know, people getting thank you cards. They're getting the laces with them. Um, you was able to see the, I got my laces. You was, you was able to see the list. We was able to see the list. Uh, you know when he did the little raffle thing and he tried to like you know act like people had actually had a chance. Um, you know, but I know so, I know somebody who hit. I know okay. a civilian who hit. Okay, so my you window tint. My, listen, this. so my window tinted. The guy that tints my windows tint on a pair. Got his pair and sold them just for thirty five hundred dollars a minute. He got man. It. What's the saying? I'm being honest. Even a garbage can gets a steak. Listen. <laughs> right. No. I listen. I agree with <laughs> okay. everything you're saying. But but if a man sitting there telling you something's got stolen. Whether it's true or not, I can tell you that there's a bunch I, well, of things going on in the Memphis Warehouse. Listen, I don't. No, I, I, I'm listen, saying I don't a lot of people don't believe him. I'm just saying to his point, 
a lot of things get stolen. Especially the way he's been acting throughout, you know, throughout this whole thing, where it's kind of like he's almost mocking everybody. Like, ha But yeah, because it's like you got. Here's the problem, though, right? This what kind of got people to turn on him. The people he looked out for. We from an old day. Somebody look out for you, especially on this level. You don't take no pictures. You don't air them out. We in the era now of a manager back door. You twelve pairs. They take a picture with the manager at the store. Take them home. Like take a picture of the receipt. So this is what kind of did him in was the people he looked out for. Got the thank you card with his handwriting on it. The shoes and everything. And with the collaboration to our ID, IT department, we were able to see that only less than a thousand pairs won the sneakers app. But when you say looked out, he was still charging them like an Yeah, 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 I'm talking about as far as buy price. Right. But the they price had an opportunay. Yeah, 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 they, yeah, they, had, really like, they and, had the money. Yeah, so, and, and then you oh, go shit, I pay, I pay retail for mine, thank God. But, yeah, see, they're, they're going for like, they were back going for like 1300 like $13 a pair. So, I mean, see, it's, again, so, all, that's my only, that's my only thing is, my only thing is like, let's be honest, your Marcus Jordan, were they gonna spank you? Like you're not gonna get any type of repercussions from this. You know, I've heard people tell me, "Yo, he don't need the money. He's Michael Jordan's son." I don't, I don't know nothing about nothing. I know plenty of rich people who got poor kids. Right. You yeah. Know what I'm I don't, I don't know that relationship. There's, I don't know there's plenty it's of none terms. of my business. It's none of nobody else's business. There's Everybody's plenty, pretty sure that he did what he did. I, I understand that. Everybody's plenty, pretty sure that he did what he did. There's plenty of privileged kids who get caught up with some bullshit when they didn't have to. Like you would think, you rich, just sit at home and not do shit. You got millions of dollars in your bank account, but they still go out there and do some dumb shit. Do they? Sometimes they don't. Like the guy, he's like the heir to some. I think it was like the. Maybe he's dropping. Maybe he's dropping these, and these are gonna be done right. I ain't on my breath. Maybe maybe it's his maybe it's his makeup to the culture. You don't know. I, sometimes I mean, I mean, it'd be like I mean to Guru's uh, to Guru's analogy from earlier. It's like OJ getting remarried and like maybe he don't kill her this time. Like you know what I'm saying? It's it's yeah. just to me to me I think how he handled it. He could have said you know what I look into. He could have been publicly uh, politically correct. You know I'm a looking. What you want the man to say? Yo, I did all of this. He not. No 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 no. no, no. But no no. But don't go and take a picture on the beach. Oh, you want your rap? No no no. We know you did it. We all know you did it. And once again, but here we say, if you're going to be OJ, don't write the book. No, thank you. I'm not admitting, yo, bro. Check this out. Stop. If I commit a crime, I am not telling on myself. OJ right. did it. He wrote that book. He ain't telling on himself. Right. He, he but basically but did if. if I did it. Why would you write a book? He's an entrepreneur. <laughs> right. But if you mark your George, don't, don't address the hate. Don't talk about, I see y'all hating on me, but I'm living good. You can't touch me like that came off like, mm. I mean, that's people have, I can't tell a man how to think. Yeah. I'm, people have egos. I, I have an ego. I mean, yeah. I walk in the room sometimes like this. Um, <laughs> I'm being honest. And then you got the humble side of me. Listen, Caesar tell you better than everybody. MJ know me better than everybody. To know me is to love me. Some people can't stand me. Some people love me. To know me is to love me. When you get to know me, it's like, oh, shit. He's not what I thought he was. Mm-hmm. Right? I think they have to say, Caesar, I- they have to say, MJ, yeah. we can't. I, I, I'm not telling on myself if I do something wrong, bro. I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm just not. this. Call that the street in me. Call that my upbringing. I'm not telling on myself. But don't let the I'm people not- you help tell on you, though. That's an, that's what we're so doing. I mean, listen, exactly. <laughs> listen, I'm, listen. Maybe maybe one day, the, maybe one day, the the, the, the alleged people that like he sold fifteen hundred pair to or a thousand pair to, maybe you they gonna what? pull up the text I'm message. Gonna you- maybe they gonna pull up. The, maybe they gonna do something. See, being maybe an Detroit. employee gotta be this. Maybe an employee gotta be the scapegoat one day. You never gonna know. Right. I'm ended with this. But don't ask for a man to tell on himself. No, no, I'm no. Not, I ain't asking him to tell on himself. No, no, I'm no, just no. saying, have some type of ownership. You ain't gotta go out there and, and do a. a, 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 a Public apology or nothing. We just said, hey, we hear your complaints. We're gonna look into it. Yeah, that's that's right. maybe that's what maybe, we're... maybe his or maybe his ownership is getting another pair to release and dropping that shit. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give this I'm gonna <laughs> give this comparison. Know. I don't have a relationship with him. I don't speak to him. I don't know. I'm gonna give this comparison, and only people in Detroit are gonna get it. There's Comey Young, and then there's Comey Kilpatrick, right? You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> One of them was smart enough to not get caught, and the other one was dumb enough to get caught. Why I gotta be the mayor? That, 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 why I gotta be the mayor, though? I'm just saying. <laughs> that both were mayors. That's coincidentally. I know. I'm not. I'm not from Detroit. I know. Why I gotta be mayors, though? Come on. I know. Because so oh, you're mayor. That's exactly. So that's why the analogy works. But Kwame, but Kwame here's the thing. Kwame, the party is what blew the can yeah. open on his situation. No, he didn't get caught doing what he was doing. Mayor. Mayor, this man put out a release to his own employees saying, do not use your city owned pagers because they are privy to being made public and what does he do he uses a city pager and phone to get caught up in his mess so if you're gonna be the one to write the memo and then you don't want to get caught with the memo like 
that's on you. So, look, even, even with the situation with the trophy rooms, I felt like he could have went about it another way if he did, which it don't really matter because Agreed. it ain't like I was going to get a size five and a half. But <laughs> I'm saying, like, all right, shoot, send some money through it. Cash App. I have my people. I got 150 people in line that I know that's going to get the shoe. Hop in line. Y'all pay for the shoes out the store so it don't look like nothing, and y'all send money to my Cash App. PayPal me or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Don't just all right. Thank you, card thirteen hundred dollars. <laughs> right. Right. But no, <laughs> that's 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 too much work. Because if you if you gonna like so now if you're doing dirt, you let you relying on. Can you imagine nine hundred yeah, people this, not to tell so, you somebody? So what about them. online sales then? No, I get it. What I'm saying okay. is, if you do that like that, you just rely. You just you just hoping that nine hundred people or twelve hundred people or fifteen hundred people that you're doing dirt with, you hoping that one of them ain't gonna tell on you. Well, Somebody gonna saying, get that and tell on you. If you're gonna right. if you're gonna call yourself doing a you know. Nino, if you're gonna be Nino Brown, right? You don't put thank you cards with the kilos of cocaine that you sell. You know what I'm saying? That's like, what we're saying. Man. You know what I'm saying? Well, thank you for your purchase. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't get well, a thank you. Card. The 17s, they weren't moving like that. Because you got yours for retail. Card. Everybody got their purpose. You got yours for retail. Yeah, you got but the fives, you saw what he you did. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, like I don't think he even was aware of the kilos. I think you were thinking we'd give thank you cards to the people. Yeah. Because you. My bad, my bad. We over here discussing it. I know, sidebar. Yeah. Let's get Marsha. Is Marsha there? Yeah, I got to run. I got to go do a clubhouse at 12 o'clock. So I got to prepare right, for man. that. I'm doing my, I'm my first clubhouse. Yo, listen, peace. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. MJ, stop cheating on me. Um, <laughs> it was a pleasure with everybody. Dunks, you a good guy. I know you can't hear me right now. You a good guy. Um, he said you a good guy. Stay there, everybody. Appreciate it. You guys are the best. I'll see y'all soon. Be good. Thank All right, you, appreciate everybody. It. All right. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. man. See um, yeah, shout out to Mary, man. That was, it wasn't even like an interview. Like, that, that, it's that just normally kicking it. It was the catch up. It's it like a normal kicking it. You know what I'm saying? You know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of Dallas. Yeah, we had hella fun. You know, it Dallas. went better than I expected, so. <laughs> How'd you think? Wait, hold on. Y'all got, wait. No, we'll tell know you about? after the show. Right. We'll tell you after the show. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Water under the bridge. Uh, He's a cool dude. <laughs> no, good thing, good yeah. thing, we, good thing we live with. Good thing we got the ambassador bridge. Man. <laughs> 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 Boy, it took a lot of water to come. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Woo. And, and the tunnel. Man. Just in case the bridge fell. We had to have a tunnel. Exactly. <laughs> we had a conversation. <laughs> uh, every time, man, but now I, I will say this, man. We, you know, Dunks, man, he's awesome, man. He's definitely been a valued member of the show. So um, The smart guy. Yes. He's definitely he's our Donatello. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh we got Mosh. Is he is he on? Well, while we waiting on him, uh, I think he was about to make. He was about to say something. Well, we were talking about sneaker con Dallas a couple years ago, and uh, this is why I miss about sneaker cons uh, is the after parties. You know, yeah, the we, mingling. Yes. Let them tell it. We was told we always go to sneaker cons to get away from our families. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, that was a hot take, wasn't it? Man, the stories. <laughs> No, it's, the stories I hear after the fact, I'm like, where were we at? Yeah. I, a lot of stuff went That's down like that we crazy. didn't know. Man. And I'm like, we was chilling. Like we was, we was trying to go shoe shopping. My ears still popping from that Miami flight. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Man, it was... Mm, and that man. walk, my, my calf still hurting. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, guru, man, his directions. Did you, did you guys hey, give that him was a, an iPhone. <laughs> did you get Mosh's number to call him with? Yeah, let me, uh, let me text him. You should have uh, downloaded Google Maps. Hey, that was the one. I showed him the phone, though. Mm-hmm. He must have been, you know, when it be but upside yeah, well, we down. We were just talking about how with the trophy yeah. rooms. I was saying the 17s, there wasn't that much hype. You could go online. I don't think Marcus realized his potential. Then you saw the fives drop, and I don't even think he expected the blue ones to do as well as they did. And that's when like the back door and got out I think of hand. Yeah. Sixteens though. No, no, it started with the twenty threes, then the seventeens, then he came around with the Khaled, whatever sixteens, and then after that, the first release after that kind of was was the five. Hey, he says he's on there. It all depends on the demand for the retro. Yeah. So. Um, but no, so, man. But that's one of the things I miss is the camaraderie, being able to kick it with like a mayor. And, the uh, you know Buckeye City Soul and one look at Lister. Shout out to him. It's been a minute. Since yeah, it's been a home. long time. Damn. Yeah, it is. Shit, COVID. <laughs> Damn, COVID just man got in the way of everything. But um, you know, man, having those opportunities and like I said, we used to throw those after parties after uh, Sticker Con, and that was our way of kind of. I don't know how anybody else felt about it, but the 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 genesis of it was I didn't feel like really going to everybody else's party, so I was like, why don't we just bring the party to us? Cause then that way we ain't gotta drive, we can relax and everything. So especially when we went to Dallas, because I was like 40 minutes away from everybody. Um, 
Lord knows you need that sofa for to eat your uh, <laughs> Chipotle burrito. <laughs> but he had me walk around in my book bag, the whole the Bay Area with that in my bag. Oh, then we get in the house. Why did you have a book bag? Dog, what Why you did you have a book bag? bag? What you mean? What? We have book bag on trips. You never had a book bag on a trip? No. I had to, I had to bust up Everywhere. on y'all when y'all was in the Bay, right? Yeah, you were the last like day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, you missed the ice cream shop. Oh yeah, that's great <laughs> shot. Woo, good. That was before 2020. Woo, One. Boy, I'm glad we didn't do a live <laughs> show out there. We didn't cancel for man. real. Man, hold on, time out. Feel me? Gonna feel me in after the show? Uh, it was nah. just, it was just like, like my says he's on there. So why he's still trying to get him on there? So it was more like we just wasn't ready. Oh, you're counting on easy to get him on here? I know. I yeah, know. remember last time I almost walked off. I know. <laughs> Shout to Don't make me come out this motherfucking poop <laughs> now, dog. I'll fuck somebody up. I just got a fucking action hey, on the way here. I'll hey, fuck somebody hey, up. Hey, 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 I gotta piss I'm off someone today, like a fat bro. Joe skit. Hey, I, <laughs> hey, I'm gonna send you a number to send to Mosh, though, because because he needs his number to call in. Okay. Send All right, right, I'm gonna text you. All right, well, man, but uh, yeah, that was a. Uh, you know, he come in. Hey, how you doing? It was just like, what flavor you want? I'm like, what, <laughs> what flavor you <laughs> want? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> no, because I ain't even gonna say I'm about to have. I'm like, because uh, I'm talking to Guru. We just talking, and you know, I make my order, and like, I didn't even hear that. It wasn't until I got to the register, I'm like, that's 11:50, and I'm like, what? And like, it, was was like, like, uh, it was like a, it was like a. It was like, whoa. Like, it was like a stare down. I'm like, let me just get my cookie dough in my cup. Let me just get that spoon. I'm card. Swipe. Let me get. And then it was, a, it was like a, it was reinforcement at the door. So on your way out, you got grimmed. Right. Have a good, wow. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I, Enjoy your ice cream. That's funny. Uh, man, well, mm. I, man, that was a funny time. Uh, obviously, Miami was a fun time. Mm -hmm. uh, even getting lost was fun. Um, I'm trying to think. Where else we go? That was fun. Did she go to New York with us? <laughs> oh man, that's no. That was that was not fun. That was not fun. <laughs> that was definitely our first hey, I mean, I first classic album. Ever, so next uh, trip, you guys are gonna see a whole other. That side was of such dogs. a bad trip. I don't even want to go back to New Where? York. New York? Jeez. I don't want to go back. No, I mean, I New, New York, York wasn't bad. The soul food, Brooklyn was good. No, when you walk 52 blocks. No, you got to be ready to eat ethnic food in New When York. you walk 52 no blocks soul. looking for a headphone jack. Oh, yeah. That was a pair. pair of Jordan ones. Yeah, I was like, nah. You just didn't know where to go. Never that did. was a. Uh, the traffic alone. Gia, it was the Chicago ones, I think, dropped. Chicago Black Toes dropped that Saturday morning. And uh, yep. G Sneaks was like, man, come on. We got to go to Jimmy Jazz. So he puts it in his GPS. Guess where we end up at? The Jimmy Jazz Warehouse. Wow. I said, dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you really trying to get the shoe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's better than we ended up in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> Remember he I wasn't there, but I heard the story. I yeah. say we invade Complex Con. I would love to go to Complex. Well, Los I'm done for an L.A. trip. It, it's right in but, Long Beach, like L.A. border. I, I would only LA. go as an excuse to go to L.A. I'm not even right? going for I know I better be in some comfortable clothes because I know it's going to be crucial. I, we got to go I put out better LA. content. You know, it's like a it's a decent event, and they're just not putting out as good a content as they can. So we, we'll show up, steal the show, carry on. <laughs> How would you like to go about this? I'm not going to do them no favors. WCW, <laughs> WWF when they showed up at the tank. Oh, well, DX showed up? Yeah. We could. That would be kind of dope. That would be kind of no. Remember, uh, so LA was another fun one. We had to drive like three hours away. Look, hold on. The MJ whole was so pissed. The whole car hold ride on. when we was on the way to uh, Wa Walmart. Bruh. I said bruh. that traffic was ridiculous. Forty-five minutes yeah. for twelve miles. I yeah, said, oh, that was that traffic. The that funniest traffic. part. The fun first of all, angry MJ is the funniest MJ because and she doesn't know it. I'm hungry, sleepy, don't mess with me. So Not the it. only place we could get was the only place we could get. And I was like, all right, you know, I'm driving. I'm like, okay, here's the GPS. And I'm and I'm like, it's three hours away. Mind you, C's text and drive, yo. FYI, C's text and drive. No, but MJ's reaction, <laughs> MJ's reaction was like, I don't feel like driving three hours. Like, what's what's the alternative, MJ? Like, we <laughs> the truth. But she was so mad at that point because we literally yeah. spent the day it was so busy. We couldn't even get a Motel 6. Hey, we got my man Mosh. I'm, I'm going to put him out for you guys, all right? Oh, Mosh. Hey. I'm about to throw him out. I think we got the same tattoo artist, actually. Word. Hey, what's going on, what's man? Up, another, man? Another boy headed beard, man. I got some representation <laughs> on the show, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's, what's up? Going what's up? On? Happy Saturday. Man. Thank you. Definitely glad to get you mm -hmm. on here, man. It's been... Man, it's funny because I had like a list of people who I've always wanted to get on the show, and it seems like once we got the Wilbur Sports, like all of a sudden we have access to those people now. 
Um, <laughs> but definitely one of the best customizers. It's almost funny. Like anytime you see like a celebrity with like a customized shoe, it's almost exclusively one of yours. Especially with the wrestlers now. Oh, WWE. I, I might as well be on the retainer right now. I mean, I just. I'm surprised you're not. I, I I might sign a you know a 30 day contract and you know go in for the pay per view this weekend. Who knows? <laughs> Man, if you need right. a manager, let me know. I, I told you, I told you, ten years from now they're gonna be inducting you into the Hall of Fame. I'm right down the road, so <laughs> why why not? Speaking of which, I mean, note to uh, WWE: if you're gonna have a Hall of Fame, actually have a Hall of Fame, like an actual place. To be. I wonder I if think they're working. I think they're working on it. I, I don't okay, know if cool. you saw that that show on A and E that they got with all the memorabilia and stuff. That's what I thought. To... That's yeah, what I thought. So I think they are. I think they are. Okay, that'll be dope. I actually would go to that. Oh yeah, I would too. One yeah. time. But no, I, so we got designer, artist, and customizer Mosh275 on the show. Um, so I guess we start from the very beginning. So you started customizing around 2004, right? Yeah, 2002 is, is when it really started. But 2004 is when I started to realize other people were doing it. That's when I saw the community and, you know, the sneaker plays, the ISSs, the Nike Talks. You know, that's when I knew other people were doing it. And that's when you started to learn how to do, you know, more techniques and things like that. And then... You know, then social media happened and everything just kind of blew up. Right. It's funny that you mentioned Nike Talk because I was just talking to somebody like, I miss those Nike Talk days where you had to go in there and deep dive. Uh, <laughs> what in the world? What did he do? Easy. Are you drunk? You know, they're online shopping. <laughs> <laughs> he's a drunk over there. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> he's on Mosh Customs buying some shoes. That's what he's doing. Yep. But no, I remember the Nike Talk days. That window is so distracting. <laughs> The um the Nike Talk days when you know you had to that's how you got all your information. Oh yeah, there was yeah. there was no no blogs. It, that was it. You stay in the threads and see what uh, um, Snuggles McDougal's uploading to see what the new Jordan was or whatever. Right. It was for me. It was either the back of a Slam magazine or it was uh, through Nike Talk. And it was funny because uh, I remember the DMP pack. <laughs> I remember the DMP pack. Like that's how everybody got their pairs. Those people networking. Through Nike Talk. Oh, yeah. um, My last day on Nike Talk, I remember vividly because I was heartbroken, was uh, the Just Don drop. And I remember just like any and every trip or tick, trick uh, I could think of, or like waiting on Hannon to drop because it was like one of the Canadian or European sites. And just all the feedback or all the links, and it just went nowhere. And that's when I found the dark side. <laughs> mm, okay, dark that's side. your turning point. I got you. <laughs> but what page you got up? I don't even know what the hell that is. It's, it's not on the stream, though. Hmm. Okay. Mm. I, don't, I think we're getting hacked or some shit. I don't know what you, what you guys got going so on. It's Gino. Hacked, the gas line. Yeah, Gino couldn't be here. So he's going to disrupt about the That's what's so crazy the is that's line. all the shoes. That's all the shoes that you talked about today. Exactly. The dunks. Exactly. That's all the shoes that you talked about. It, must yeah. be, it looks like the prep from earlier today, but it's not on the stream. I don't know what the hell is going on. I'm going to figure it out, though. All right. Okay. So it's just us then. Okay. But anyway, Mosh. Um. So you started in, we said 2002, but then you took it, well, you really got into it 2004. Um, what was that whole culture like? Like now everybody in the mother is, you know, customizing and whatnot. Right. And so what was that culture like back then? Back then it was non-existent. I mean, I, I could probably count on like one or two hands how many people were doing it around the world, um, at least that I knew about. You know, the first time I saw someone doing customs was um, in a Complex magazine when Complex still had a magazine. Someone was doing, um, it was C2 was doing the customs, um, and there was like different models wearing them. You know, I played sports all my life, so I was always a competitor, and I was like, I could do that. You know, right. I had no idea how to paint shoes. I went to like the local paint store and bought whatever and made a pair of Air Max 90s that were all different shades of purple, and they were terrible in hindsight because, I mean, again, I didn't know how to prep shoes, I didn't know how to do any of that stuff. But, you know, I went to the barber shop, and, you know, everyone's like, oh shit, you know, when Kai Curse, my left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he said, "Where are you going to?" All right, I'm just, right. just making sure. I don't know. Um, so they're like, "You know, when did Nike drop those?" And I was like, "I made them." So you know, of course, they asked me to to do a pair for a free cut. So that, that's what I did. So, but you know, fast forward a month later, every barber in the shop is wearing my shoes, and they're saying, "You know, you know, our boy Mosh did the shoes." I had my little business card in the front with all the bootleg sneakers and all that stuff, so everyone can kind of find me. And that was my social media back then was just getting the word of mouth through the barber shops. You know, and then over time, I just started to get better and better at learning techniques and now that, that's going through the forums and stuff and talking to other people that were doing what I was doing when I discovered them you know then it was just a matter of refining my skills and kind of getting back to the artwork and things like that because when I started my customers were mad basic they were just 
straight up color blocking. And, you know, if you see a lot of beginner customs, that's what mine looked like. It was like anybody else. There was no difference. You know, but as I got better, you know, it got tuned into my actual artistic ability. So, you know, I did art in college and high school and things like that. So I always had that ability, but I felt comfortable to actually try to get more, you know, tedious and difficult with the, with the projects. And then, again, then social media happened and, you know, that, that kind of just went out the freaking stratosphere. Right. Now, I know it might, I know it might change depending on uh, the level of um, art that's on the custom but on average like how long does it take to customize a shoe um prep prep itself can take like an hour if you do it properly um because you're sitting there taking off layers and putting different adhesions and depending on what the materials are especially like with cleats and stuff there's you know it's like you're painting a car you're you're doing sanding you're doing all this crazy stuff a lot of weird smells come out of my shop when when it's during nfl season (laughs) but um yeah, between prep and paint, I mean, I, I can get a pair done in a day, but then there's other ones that could take a week, depending on if you want, you know, a, the mom flash tattoo or you want the Sistine Chapel. It really depends on what you're looking for. Right. Right. Now, how long do they last, though? Do they last a long time? Because, like, I see some customs, it's like, after a few wears, it kind of flakes off. That's that's uh, that's bad prep. That's all. Oh, yeah. That's why the prep is so important. If you, if you, if the prep's the worst part of the custom, it's just tedious. But you can tell them people aren't prepping their shoes because, you know, if you're doing it properly, it's going to bond. It's going to stick. Um, I have customers that I had when I started, you know, learning how to do it properly that are still fine. But, right. you know, then you, then you see, you know, Nike with, like, Jordan 3s and whatever. They're chipping and flaking because they're just applying paint on top of the Smith soles. You know, it was, it, there's not a proper process, but I think they've started to learn. Well, that kind of leads to a question I have for you because I'm always interested in this. Um as a designer, because we all know, <laughs> we like you'll design something or somebody else will design something, and then like a year or so later, we'll see this Nike drop, and it's like, hmm, what does that remind me of? Like, yeah. how- tread lightly, because seeds will sell your ideas. I'm speaking from personal experience. <laughs> oh, right, tread right, lightly, yeah. my he friend, like on this so topic. That, he acts like they tread, don't listen to the show, and tread his hair lightly. His own mouth. Three of my shoes that I did miraculously end up releasing, and the only person who speaks to the CEO of Nike has a Falcons hat on. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he's like he'll say something on the show, and then it happens, and he'll blame me as if he didn't say it on the show. Do you talk to Nike? Do you, do you communicate yeah, with Nike regularly? Do you, you communicate with Nike regularly? I don't mean I talk about you. Okay. It could be me for all you know, bro. But it could be. If we but put then that again, in the air, I would love to have some forest green fourteens. So <laughs> y'all heard MJ. Um, but no, so like, okay, is that frustrating though? Like when you put on because you got to put all this creativity, all this work into something, and to see a brand kind of. Um, take that idea like is that frustrating for you as an artist I mean it works both ways I mean you gotta remember us us custom artists we're taking inspiration from a lot of their stuff I remember a lot of my beginner customs were like doing a Jordan inspired by the AirTech challenge like I'm, you know we're doing we're, we're taking it from each other you know at right. the end of the day you know if they really didn't want us to thrive they could hit us with that letter and get rid of us real quick right. so I, I feel like you know you have to have a little bit of uh I don't know. I don't feel Give like they're take. always watching. Yeah, I mean, I understand that I'm not going to bite the hand that feeds me. I mean, I know. Like, when you say they can, are. when you say they can send a letter and just end it, how do you feel about the whole little Nas mischief situation that just happened with Nike? Well, the problem with that was, you know, they were just barring the lines of people that weren't informed, didn't understand that Nike had nothing to do with it. You know, at the end of the day, I think their big problem was either. One, how they source 666 pairs of black Air Max 97s for one, because the customizer is just finding white on white Air Forces right now. It's a, a freaking nightmare yeah. in itself. Right. So, like, to, to source that specific shoe, you know, all right, are they legit? Are they legit shoes to start off with as base shoes? Oh, and then, you know, and then you get people that, you know, mainstream that have no idea that have nothing to do with sneaker culture, you know, like moms in Iowa are like, oh, those are the devil shoes that Nike put out. That's all they know. They don't know that it's a custom artist doing whatever. Right. So I feel like the biggest thing with custom stuff is transparency. I think people try to blur the lines to make people either buy them under the guise that it's one thing and it's not because they might have to do that. But I don't know. Like I, I, I think as long as you're explaining what you're doing and you're covering your faces, you're fine. I just don't think, especially having Lil Nas X, you know, who's mainstream, you know, as hell now. Right. You know, him co-signing it, that just put more eyes on it. That you know, if they had enough, you know, they didn't have a problem with with the walk on water shoes. But yeah, when the devil got involved, that's what they had a problem. That's when I that's that was my point. But 
Out of all the collab, I mean, all the collaborations, of all the customizations that you've done, which one is your favorite? Does anyone stick out to you? It's like picking your favorite child. I mean, honestly, like at a point now, like you, you, you get so emotionally involved in most of these projects. I mean, the, at least thankfully I can pick those like that. Right. I mean, I, I know everyone knows me for the LeBron Iron Man. So everyone knows me for that pair just because that was kind of the one that thrust me into mainstream. And, you know, people knew I was the guy that did LeBron shoes because he's him. Um, in terms of favorite customs, though, um, like personally, gosh, I was a big fan of like, I did some like Quail Man Air Forces that were like really simple, but they were just creative. Like, like based off of Doug Funny had like the little, um, I did the belt strap around the top so it looked like the quail thing. Yeah, yeah the little headband. Yeah. yeah. Like, See, if you, if you wasn't around for Nickelodeon, you probably don't know. Shout out Doug and Porkchop. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, and then I did, and then I did the Sky Davis shoes too on the Jordan 10. I did the, um, uh, I forgot the name, but in that whole Doug thing. Yeah, I, when I was doing, like, trying to get ideas, I was always just getting inspiration from growing up, whether it was movies, cartoons, music, you know, whatever. Like, I, I was a big Knight Rider fan, so I did some, some Knight Rider themed LeBron 7s, and I put the, the light in the bubble, so it looked like the light from Kit, and I had, like, the Knight Industries. Wow. Again, you know, again, that's another Wash reference, you know, that's, a, I thought Michael Knight was, like, awesome, and I didn't know who David Hasselhoff was, <laughs> so, but, um, but yeah, the, so a lot of things that have connections to me growing up, because I mean, that's a lot of times where I was happy, <laughs> not stressed. Right. So nostalgia is really big for me. Now, one of the cool things I personally like is the fact, like I said, it's almost like when it comes to like celebrity or high profile, high uh, big name uh, customizations, it's almost one of your creations. But at the same time, like somebody like us can still get a shoot done by you. Like you're not like so busy with them that you're not still connected to, to the community. And you know you stay like you basically are accessible no matter who you are. Um, yeah. Is there any I, celebrity? I, oh, go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say you know no matter what the success is, I mean I don't feel like I'll ever be a person that will switch up just because I came from a trailer park <laughs> and I know that like, you know like no matter how much money you make and how much success you get, you know you still got to go home. You still got to go deal with people that know Dan and not Mosh. And it's like it's almost. It's stupid to act like you're somebody better than somebody else because at the end of the day, you could lose it in one second. Then what do you got? Right. Well, I got to apologize to you, too, because, like, for the first two years of our show, I kept pronouncing your name Mache. <laughs> <'Cause> All right. <laughs> Mache. It sounds it way more artistic. Yeah, no, it's, it's good. Exactly. I, my iPhone still says Mache, so you're, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, yeah. is there a celebrity? Because I know you've worked with a lot of uh, the athletes. Uh, in particular, it seems like, like you said, uh, the, the wrestlers seem to have gravitated to you uh, more so than anybody. Um, and I think it's kind of cool, too, because that's another way wrestling. You know, growing up, you know, we grew up during the Attitude Era. And so to kind of see wrestling have that connection with this generation through sneakers, I think is dope. Um, is there any particular wrestler that, you know, you work with the most that is, um, I don't know, like a diehard sneaker hit? Shane O'Mac. Um, yeah, Shane is the thing is with, with Shane. He, um, you know, he's in and out so much, and it, it's funny. I remember when I was really head working heavy with him, like when he was still really like um, on the shows a lot. You know, he would like call me like and apologize for like bothering me. I'm like, dude, you're Shane McMahon. I'm like, you call me whatever the hell you want. <laughs> like, I was like, play, I was I was playing like a, like a pickup game at the park, and he and he called me. And I was like, I got, I got to answer this, and Shane, freaking Shane McMahon. And then you know, he's like, oh, he was, like, he was like, I'm sorry, you're playing basketball or whatever. I'm like. Dude, it's it's fine. What, what do you right. want? Right. So, um, but the rapport's been good with him because you know the first time you know a lot of times when I do these celebrity things, at least in the beginning, I would do, give give them a pair to open up the conversation, the relationship, and let them see the work, kind of let it speak for themselves. And then when they come back, that's obviously when I charge them. So I, I linked up with Shane through um, Neil, who's uh, the head of music, like all the music people that come in for WWE. So he got Bad Bunny, he got all these people to be. That's, right. He's that guy, but he's a big sneaker guy too. So he linked me with Shane. I did a pair of ones that were the, the different shades of money that he wore, and he he obviously loved them. Um, and then down the road, he just kept hitting me up, hitting me up. So thankfully, you know, whatever I need tickets for WrestleMania, whatever, I'm good now. Right. So, I can only imagine. Guy, but, I can only imagine yeah. like if Barack Obama called me in the middle of the show, like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were doing the show." Like, you're Barack Obama. Right. We can we can stop. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll but pause no. For a second. I gotta say, in particular with Shane McMahon, like, cause I, you know, I haven't watched wrestling in 
like every now and then like I see clips online or whatever. But one of the moments in recent memory that I actually got excited about was when Shane came back because he was gone for so mm -hmm. long. Mm -hmm. And when he came back, to hear that music come out of nowhere. That, that's the thing about wrestling. Sometimes that music just plays out of nowhere. And so to see him come back or whatever, like I was always, even though he wasn't technically a wrestler. Right. It doesn't matter. He just climbs to the top, I'm flies off the so top rope, throws it over. Even when he, he was a emerged. heel. Even when he was a heel, he was so entertaining. Like, so I, I was always a Shane McMahon fan. Um, yeah. As well as, like, I, it's funny because I guess I can tell this story now. We were, this is uh, about a year or so into us doing our show. We were going to get Hulk Hogan because Nick Hogan was actually listening to our, our show at the time. Whether he listens to it now, I don't know. But he was listening to our show at the time, and so I reached out, like, you know, can we get your dad on the show? And he's, you know, he said he's going to talk to him and stuff. And I think we were getting close to getting him on the show, and then about a week later, that's when the controversy of him saying the N-word came out. And so that put a kibosh in the hole. We'll send uh, Dunkamaniac shirts out their way. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but no, like, so, like, but, like, because I don't want to say, because I don't want to sound pompous when I say it. Because there's a lot of people, you know, they, they're getting into sneakers now, but are there any, like, like you mentioned the guy that's the head of music. Is there anybody else, like, as far as wrestlers are concerned, are, like, really into yeah. sneakers? I mean, Kofi is. He's, he's certainly that's someone what I who, who genuinely has a love for it. You know, he's, he was wearing dunks in the ring, and, he's, and he started to make it a fun challenge to, like, just bust out crazy stuff. Like, I remember he, um, he wore those Grinch um, uh, Insta Pumps during yeah. whatever, during, like, Christmas time. And, you know, he did it because he liked the shoe. I mean, they're a nightmare to wrestle in because, you know, he's a jumping off the top rope. That, that carbon fiber plate that's on the bottom got stuck mm -hmm. in the rope, and he almost broke his neck. So he was telling wow. me the story how, like, you know, he's always trying to find things that certainly work for whatever's matching their, their gear, but also has to work, you know, in the ring. Like, I remember um, sorry, two WrestleManias ago, they did some they did some gear that was, like, a coloring book, and it was, mm -hmm. like, their journey getting to WrestleMania. So it started as black and white drawings, and as they would continue, they'd start coloring it in. And he had he started with the, uh, the Air Max 1s that had the, the blueprint on them, like, with yeah. the lines and stuff. And he was using those, but they were, again, he was, like, rolling his ankle it was, and doing all this stuff. So he needed a pair of shoes. So he, he hit me, like, you know, kind of frantic, like, yo, I need something that goes with this. And, you know, I went to the mall. Again, I was really, you know, short on time, too. I couldn't just order a pair and wait for him. But he needed them for, like, SmackDown, like, that week. Right. So I went to, like, like finish line and grabbed the pair of Zions. And I was like, well, these work. You know, I had to make sure they were, you know, make sure he wouldn't break his neck. You know, then we we made something happen. So that happened a lot. You know, a lot a lot of last minute things. Um, that's what I was thinking. If you're gonna do that coloring book thing, that's what popped in my mind. Like the Noah, the Air Jordan 34, the Noah colorway, where it had the the scribble and coloring yeah. on it. I'm yeah. like, that probably would have worked for him. And then when you said it, I'm like, bing. Okay. It makes me think yeah. too. Like I remember, like it makes me think of all the wrestlers that I know. Because I remember, like growing up, like Kevin Nash. Like you'll see him in some Jordan. He's from Michigan. Yeah, I know, man. We need to get him on the show too. So is that I, was know, I, did I saw him at Complex Con the last Eric one. Eric Bischoff is from Michigan too. I did a pair for Bret Hart, and actually his wife commissioned me to to do them. What? Because um, there was a picture. Um, it was back in the '80s with him and Anvil, and he was wearing the um, the white and Carolina blue ones, like the originals. And um, she couldn't find them anywhere. And I, you know, I showed her how much you know to get it retro was, and she was like, "Oh, I, you know, I don't want to, can't spend that for whatever." And I was like, well, I'll tell you what. I was like, I ended up grabbing the, the Obsidian ones and changed them up. and just kept the, you know, the Obsidian sole for them. And I right. just customized them and, like, put, like, the wedding anniversary. But there's a there's a photo of him holding them. Like, he was wearing them and whatever. But I, it was a really dope photo of seeing him with the glasses on and, and the ones. And I was like, oh, Bret Hart's a sneaker guy. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. Right. Now, I got I a question either. for you. Yeah, based, hit me. based on gimmick, right, if you could work on, like, if you had to, like, put their... Uh, their costume design, if you had to put their gimmick on a shoe, which wrestler throughout any moment in history would you have wanted to do a shoe for? Oh, God. That's tough. The Ultimate Warrior. Ooh, I, was thinking I about did him. Ultimate Warrior one. I did, I did a pair of Warriors for, um, for Eric Graham. Look at this. He, got in, he got inducted into the, um, the Hall of Fame for like, the Warrior Award. Mm -hmm. But I did a pair of Jordan 3s um, for him to wear. And Hell yeah. they were, I used the, um, the Cyber Mondays as the base. Did the stripes like the face paint like where the panels were for the heel and the toe box and then i um then i had a strap that had the tassels hanging off so you could take it off and on with the, the shoelaces they, they were there they were clean and right. um, I, I got a photo of him um uh, on stage wearing them 
I thought it would be dope. Like, uh, have you done a Shawn Michaels shoe? No, I haven't. I mean, be, I've, I've seen people sick. do custom versions of them. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think. I mean, uh, I, I don't want to say Flair because they've already, he already has his own shoe. So I'm, I'm trying to. Think I mean, Flair's the man, though. I mean, it's, that's the well, easy. Yeah, answer. of course. Right. But, but I think, I think because, um, just because I've seen Adidas do their version of it, I might be competitive to try and one up it. Trust me, but Adidas gave you a low bar to jump over. By the way. Oh no, I know. Well, I, <laughs> I, I was actually, I was, I was talking to my man designing at basketball over there, and I told him, and he was like, "Yeah, they did that before I even got here, so I can't even. That's not my fault." And I was like, "All right." Okay. It's like when the Dame shoes came out, but yeah. um, I mean, ma- Macho Man. I did a, I did a Macho Madness Air Force One for a guy WB two years ago. That was really dope. Um, but the NWO madness stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. I think. Uh, should do like a Hollywood blonde pair. For I Steve think Austin. Stone Cold would go dope on a, um, a Air Raid, the black and gray Air Raid, and I think that be fire. I think. Um, I think Sting would be dope on the Gary Payton glove. That be like new old Sting or new Sting? Which one? The old Sting. The old Sting. Old Sting. <laughs> yeah. White. We, we, we gotta make sure. Does the white, model, white face paint not, not old. Stain. I gotta ask you, how important is the huh? model? Because the about the one you in the rafters. No, the that's new sting. That's good. That's a new. He sting. means like old, old, like '90s, like colorful face. Ultimate Warrior sting, Sir, more or less. I forgot what they were called. Sir yeah. Sir yeah. Oh, okay, no, no, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about the newest. I like the newest. Now, how important is the model? Because the you know because certain shoes <laughs> lend themselves well to a particular uh, theme or story that you're trying to tell too, right? Mm-hmm. Or it yeah, it you? depends, and and that's part of the challenge for me too, because you know generally when I have, I'm doing a consultation, you know they'll have their idea. Then the more important part is, okay, what's the issue? What are you thinking? Right. And then it's my job to figure out how to translate their idea and make it look good, you know, because for one, they're going to be wearing it and they're going to be saying, "I did it," so it can't look like shit. Right. They make some whack custom, be like, "Oh, well, Mosh made it," and then it's like, well, "There goes my reputation that I spent <laughs> twenty years trying to build." One shoe. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Right. So there's even a profile like, like now. Oh, go, ahead. Exactly. go ahead. I was just gonna say, like, I like I'll tr- I'll pretty much turn down phone positive customs now, just because of the durability part of it. Um, no matter how well you prep it, it's always rolling the dice. You never know how it's gonna bond. So, like, I, I learned a long time ago, don't even bother. <laughs> so, real quick, while I'm re- while I'm still remembering, because there's two things I want to ask you now. Since you said that, one, there's a profile called Russell Botch. Follow it. It is the funniest best. It's profile. The best. It is it's the, the best. best. Um, it's basically the profile is just basically just post clips. Of literally wrestle botches, like just botch spots uh, that yeah. you know, seen in today, wrestling. Man, today Super Cell Saturday. Oh, there! Oh <laughs> man, I love those. I love his Mondo yeah. Mondays too. Um, <laughs> Mondo Mondays. But uh, speaking of the phone posits, because it made me think about. Remember the mirror phone posits from what was that 2012? When they were flanking all over the place, and people man. weren't really asking me to touch them up. Who was that dog? So there's no way to fix that. No. <sighs> Wow. I, I had beer paint, but it's not gonna look the same. I mean, it's yours like, big. Yours big enough to go to a chop shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, on, honestly, um, I got asked to touch up. Um, you know, the, all those um, those Usher threes and Usher elevens, like all those mm-hmm. crazy yeah. ones. Yeah. They were, um, I got asked to touch to to touch them up because they were all oxidized. Because the way that material is, it's weird over time. It looks it looks like. It's oxidation. That's what it like is. It fogs up or something. It, it gets like green, like patina, like oh, spots. Wow. It's, it's really crazy. So wow. they asked me if there was a way to touch them up, and I was like, "Now regular paint." I'm like, "You're gonna have to like do some science experiments." So like, he was trying to like find like auto paint things to like that to match it because I tried working on it, and it wasn't. I mean, one of them I I saved, but the other ones were like. It, it just it didn't match at all and like i'm a color theory guy so like i didn't even feel comfortable like, yeah, i'm like uh, we can't do anymore i was like i don't want to fuck all the I'm shoes so mad so she knows how much they're worth <laughs> i'm mad about those mirrors though because i'm mad at night because it's like you know i i would like to think they would product test some of this stuff and you would think that in the course of them doing right you laughing <laughs> you would think in the course of them doing it they would have come to the conclusion hey this is going to chip relatively fast you know and so now I mean, I don't think you can sell a pair because everybody knows mm-hmm. they're going to flake and nobody wants to go through that. Right. Mm-hmm. And they don't look as good. As they did when they first no. dropped. Yeah. It's like, you take the, even, if you used to, even if you were to take all that paint off, it just looks, I don't know. It, it's, yeah. it's a bad look, man. Damn it. Um, anyway, uh, you're not just a customizer, though. You've also designed your own shoes. You just released the Badlands yesterday, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, pre-order's mm-hmm. still going on. It's uh, 
it's been a cool evolution of what I've been doing because, I mean, again, I've been doing the custom shoes for so long, and I, you know, I know we talked about, you know, how many, you know, notable people and brands and all that stuff I've been fortunate enough to work with, and it's kind of like you got to a point where it's like, all right, well, what else can I do? Right. You know, like I, I, I could go the route to learn how to, you know, do the shoe search and stuff, and start doing the materials and like Dank does and all that stuff, and honestly, like, I, I feel like. That, that's already done like i'm not a good swimmer so i want to stay with what's comfortable you know i right. like being an artist and i'd rather perfect what i'm doing but then the, the creating of a shoe you know for years people were always like you know when, when are you going to make your own shoe when are you going to make your own shoe and i was always very uncomfortable about even thinking about it because it was foreign territory i was an artist i wasn't a shoe designer and like i knew that i, I wouldn't let myself be like think of myself as any more than that because i was i was afraid honestly right um so like two years ago, um, when All Star was in Chicago, that was two years ago, right? Yeah. Oh, was it? Um, not this past February, but the one before. The one before. So yeah. yeah. So generally during All Star weekend, I usually have some kind of activation with a brand, whether it's doing either you know a pop up, doing some kind of projects, doing the one on one for like a dunk contest. I always have something going on. For the first year, no one hit me up, and I was kind of like, damn, like, you know, what what a what am I doing wrong? You know, why, why don't they want to work with me? So I was like, you know what? I was like, I'm, I'm tired of waiting on the brands to, to kind of dictate where I go. So I was like, you know what? I was like, it's time to do my own thing. And I hit up my man, Rich, um, with Garrickson studio. He had someone I know forever. And he had asked me, you know, whenever you want to make a shoot, just let me know. So I just started, uh, picking out Vibram Souls as a base. Cause I, I knew, you know, what I, what I liked in terms of comfort and things I can work with. And then I was just sketching, you know, and then, you know, the, the Mosh Runner, a couple months later, you know, had, had a silhouette, and then we're just kind of going to town in terms of storytelling and um, colors, and the reception's been great, you know, in the beginning, I think people are so brand conscious, and they, they want to wear things that people know what they are, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's wearing wearing the Jordan, the Nike, you know, that new, you know, new Balances storm right. back, which is great, yes. but, you know, like, people want to want to wear, you know, the Dior's and all that stuff to flex, and, like, I think people were my goal when I made this. I want to make it be a runner that the NBA guys you just keep walking in the tunnel. I want to see PJ Tucker holding my shoes. I want to see my man Stephon Diggs wearing my shoes like beforehand, being like you don't have these. And that was kind of the goal. You know, when I designed it, you know, I, I'm I'm a 41 year old dude who's big about comfort now. You know, obviously, you know, I want them to look good, but yeah, I want to make a comfortable shoe that I can throw on every single day. And I and I kind of feel like the shoes clean enough that it's like. Uh, on everyday wear, like a pair of New Balances, but it's also high quality stuff. So like, when you walk around, you know, people look at it like that's something different. Like, what are those? In, in a good way. Right. I gotta and, thank you though on your Mosh collab with uh, Ewing. Oh yeah. I, mean, I love man. Guru knows. Like, I, first of all, it, it was funny. It was funny when those dropped though. <laughs> it was funny when those dropped though because we had, I don't know if we had just come back from LA, but uh, one of the funny stories from that weekend is. Uh, we was in this house, we got an Airbnb, and the TV in the room is one of those old box TVs with the VCR built into it, and there was a tape of Ace Ventura stuck in there. <laughs> and that's all that played that weekend. It just played on loop because awesome. it, it, it was, it went, you couldn't even watch TV. It would just play that movie in a loop. It would play, stop, rewind, and start playing again. <laughs> and so, that was in your master suite? Yeah, no, yeah, group, no, Jumpman. Yeah, with Jump the VCR. Yeah, yeah, he, had, he, uh, no, he always Jumpman, had the best no, no, rooms. No, no, no. <laughs> well, I should. But no, Jumpman, Jumpman actually had the master suite that weekend. But the room I had, that's that's what happened. And I love Ace Ventura. That's one of my favorite movies. As a matter of fact, oh, yeah. I think around the time those shoes dropped, I was actively looking for the movie because it wasn't on any streaming profile whatsoever. I think now it is. But mm-hmm. when you dropped those, I was like, yo, I got to have those. That might be the first time I've ever said that about a Ewing shoe ever. I was like, I got to have these. And so, uh, oh, yeah, yeah I, I thought that shoe was dope. I'm glad you made that. What made you even make the collab based on that? Um, well, I, I'll, I'll give you the more of the backstory. See, originally, I, I when I used to customize back way back when, I had a notebook of just themes that I wanted to do. And again, it goes back to things I was inspired by, whether it was movies, music, whatever. Ace and Turtle was one of my favorite movies. And um, years before, I was doing a lot of work with Dwayne Wade and Wade Wade. I was doing, you know, um, makeups and things like that and actually one of the themes that I had planned was to do an Ace Ventura on the way away originally right. and um, just things didn't work out you know with leaning and whatever so I still had the idea um, 
Ewing came to me, and you know, I, I, they also you know own Chalkline, and they're they're both together, the same right. entity. And they had hit me um, about wanting to do a shoe, and I was like, I'm like, yeah, of course. And, you know, someone fr- from originally from New York. I mean, I, Ewing's are synonymous. I mean, they're freaking you know monster shoes, but you know, for nostalgia's sake, I'm like, why not? So. Um, I said I wanted to do it on the high, and I, you know, I designed. I had the design already in my head from the weights, like the, the initial idea. Right. But the original mock-up of those wasn't just the dolphins color for the um, for the Hawaiian print. It was actually different panels with different colors of the Hawaiian print. So there's multicolored, and the sock liner was supposed to be like the green and yellow stripes of his pants. Okay. And so it was really crazy on the inside, and the gray was supposed to be white. And the outsole was supposed to be teal, and then on the back instead of the thirty-three, it was supposed to say number five, the Ray Finkel's number. Right. Yeah. So yeah. what ended up happening was, I, so I had a couple different variations, and you know when I saw saw that the, the mock-ups of the multicolored, it didn't look great to me. So we went with the, you know, sticking with the Dolphins colorway, which I mean certainly works. And then the gray, the same deal. Like the mock-up, they thought I colored it in gray, but it was really supposed to be white. So ah. when they made the model and it was gray, I was like, you know what? I was like, I like it though. Like, I like it. I'm happy with it. And they were kind of like, you know, if you want to make any changes, you know, it's probably going to end up releasing like in September. I wanted it to release as a summer shoe because I mean, just the colorway was right. that. So, so I was like, no, nah, we're good. I'm good with it. So they came out and we were going to do alternate versions and things like that. And mm-hmm. it just, it, I mean, I'm sure it could still happen. I have a, still have a relationship with people over there. And they're great. But, um, but yeah, it, the the event was dope, and I, I found out that that was the second highest selling Ewing uh, behind Fab and Tion Taylor's that they did at um, at Packer. Right. Um, but that was my shoe was the first one they actually did a restock of because they sold out. And that shoe was dope. Wow. Props. Uh, that shoe was yeah. dope. Congrats on that. I mean, I love that shoe. So and I, it's funny. It makes me think I gotta get a I gotta get a Ray Finkel jersey. Right. <laughs> like, I definitely gotta get laces a out. There, there you go. Um. <laughs> So I know that you're working with Sean Paper Chester Williams, who's a friend of the show. Love him. Shout mm-hmm. to OSD Live. OG. Um, OG. Yeah. So I know you can't speak on the specifics. So, but like, can you kind of like at least tease what you guys are working on? Yeah. Um, so I mean, again, I've known Sean forever. You know, before the OSD days. You know, way way back when, doing the the Funk Flex car shows yep. <laughs> and all that stuff way back then. And um, I was actually reached out to um, by Sean, Sean's people. He's working with Infinite now. And they, um, as this, the space is kind of evolving, we're trying to figure out different ways to stay with the times. And, you know, we know cryptocurrency and NFTs are a big thing now. So I've seen a couple people do the NFTs and we're going to be doing together, going to do something, um, launching NFT very, very soon, um, tied in with, with, with my model. So I'm excited about it. I've, you know, got a lot of good plans for it man I, I'm, I can't wait to see what it is it's supposed to drop this week right or am I wrong yeah the yeah. date okay yeah so stay yeah, tuned I, I know <laughs> yeah stay tuned it's coming you know, it, it's coming we're, we're we're at the home stretch throughout this discussion I've had a whole lot of ideas brewing in my mind so I'm gonna have to reach out and kind of share some ideas with you get your take on it so I know okay. it's mental health awareness month I got a few ideas brewing for that mm-hmm. most definitely so now nah, I'm um Ah, uh, man, I had a question. Dang, I just lost it. I hate when I do that. Multitasking, man. I know, right? right. So, no, do you So do you have any other plans for coming on any other shows? Like I said, the Badlands just released. You said it's still open. Oh, yeah. Do you have any? So so pretty much the um, the plan is I'm going to be releasing a different colorway, a different story every month. You know, when I first started dropping the shoe, um, the first one was back in um, back in August. Last year was the first colorway. And what I had yeah. done is I would, you know, it, with a pre-order model, you just guarantee that whoever wants to support can get them. That's the only way to do it, you know. If I right. and I also didn't know, you know, with my first shoe, I didn't know how it was going to be received. You know, at the right. end of the day, it's it's a big big risk, you know. Mm-hmm. So I didn't want to just be like, make like a thousand shoes and have no idea if I was going to sell them. So right. the pre order was kind of a safe way to be like, all right, let, let let's see how the market is. Let's see how they're received, and you know, and they received really well. You know, we're we're into this is the fourth colorway. Um, we, and everyone has been inspired by something. Um, the only one that wasn't inspired by an actual place was the last one. That was the gouache colorway. Yeah. And it was the, the whole shoe was inspired by watercolors, and the whole shoe was um, uh, it's hand dyed, like with the ice dye canvas. And so every single one that people got was a one on one. 
So it kind of gets that little bit of the custom thing, but also you're getting, you know, high quality production shoe. And that was actually a design my wife came up with. So she's been giving me shit for the last two months about how her, her first <laughs> shoe outsold my colorways. <laughs> so to Mrs. Mosh. Right. Oh, yeah. So she's crowned herself as creative director of Mosh Customs now. I'm just there. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's you just help. <sighs> yeah, right. I'm, I'm just a hired, I'm hired, hired help. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, like you um, based in you based in New York, right? I'm in Connecticut now, so okay. I'm, I'm a Connecticut resident by marriage, but I'm from New York. But um, <laughs> yeah, the, the the Badlands one is um, it's one of those like more regular wears. I'll hold it up just so. This is her size, so you see how small it is. <laughs> but um, my size 12, even you know, when I designed the shoe. I want to have a short toe box, so us big footers still look like we had you know not boats. I think a right. lot of times you see like you know we all know that Kevin Durant photo when he has his shoe and it looks like the big long bananas. Right. And I didn't want that for my shoes. So like, right. like this is my size 12. Like, it doesn't look big. Like it still mm. has that short squatty yeah. toe box. Right. So, so the goal was you know no matter what I mean obviously girls shoes always look better because they're just little. That's and they just, true. They do. Yeah, and I know that. So I wanted to be like, all right, how can a size 12 and a size 13 guy get that and whatever? So when we did it, you know, we designed it with. Um, it's always quality material. It's always suede and new bucks, 3Ms. Um, and this one, I actually put a French terry liner. So it, it, you think it's going to be really hot, but if you think of all those like sweat shorts that they have, it's all French terry because it's like a, it's a lighter. Uh, uh, what, what, I don't know what the word it's is. It's that comfort factor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, they're cozy as hell. I mean, people could wear them with no socks. I mean, I got to wear socks. You know, mm-hmm. no choke socks. But you know, <laughs> I know like Kofi. I know Kofi wore um, the Centralia colorway in the ring, and oh, he wow. wore them with no socks. I was just like, you're an animal. But, um, you make a size 15 of those? I was waiting for it, 14. too. Damn it. But I'll tell you what, but, but, but I'll tell you what though. Um, Kyle Rudolph and CeCe Sabathia are both size 15s, and they got the 14, and they're good. And I know they bought every single one. So I think, okay. I don't know how, how it stretches out or what, but it does work. We're working on getting bigger sizes. Um, basically, with the with the Vibram soles, it's an open mold, so only the size that are available is what's there. Unless you right. open up that mold, you know, Costs a lot of money to do it, which is just a business decision. Right. And just want to make sure that the, the want is there to, to make that investment. And it, it, it's there because I'm getting a lot of NFL, my NFL players, like, hey, like Cam Jordan yelling at me, like, every time I drop a shoe, I make a size 16. So, especially, <laughs> uh, well, it's funny you mentioned the NFL. Like, somebody's asked to uh, ask you about the uh, Randy Moss tattoo. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve Butcher. Yeah. Uh, 14 hours, very painful. Two tours. <laughs> I literally, I flew out there. I flew out there and um, lit, went to his house, and it was seven hours one day, seven hours the next day. Then I flew back on a red eye, and then I had to film with ESPN the same morning. So I had no sleep. I had plasma leaking on my leg. I was filming a, a thing for MLB and ESPN. It was it was a rough time, but the, the results were well worth it. <laughs> wow! Hell yeah! Damn. Yeah, it was real. He's a well known artist. I think easy has got oh, to verify him. Steve Steve's a monster. Oh damn, easy! Did you get some work done by? Yeah, that's who did Thanos for me. Oh, yeah, Steve's the man. Damn, all right. Yeah, and and this girl can cook her ass off too. Oh, but she be feeding you while you get your tattoo too. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. She cook, yeah, she's cooking good. while you're there. So like, then you, you stop and have dinner. Oh, it was it was great. It's all a right, whole experience. Well, we got to schedule right. a uh, session with. Uh, you gonna get a tattoo? Get me a tattoo. I need some more, so yeah. I mean, so I got the two. <laughs> two. So I got two. So I That's need to it? get some more. Right. No, I, I'm my bad. I'm sorry. We're about I, to get sneaker box tats. Yeah. Yeah. We gotta get, have to come up we with a dope logo. Get, this, get the show logo on you. Yeah. Uh, but no, I definitely appreciate appreciate you making time for us, man. I know you're a busy man. I do um, appreciate your great work as always. Yeah. Man. Lord knows Thank how many Shane McMahon phone calls you missed out on doing the show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> have you ever did some Wizard of Oz shoes? Yeah. She did Wizard of Oz shoes for one of. He was one of the lollipop people. Like he oh was in the movie. God, really? Yeah. I did a pair of LeBron Nine Elites. And actually that shoe is where Dwayne Wade found me. Because I posted this is back, you know, what whatever two thousand twelve. I did them and Dwayne saw those shoes and hit me up and it's funny that that how it worked. But I, like right. one side was like was um you know, Yellow Brick Road and mm. I had like the, the Emerald uh city and all that oh. stuff. It, uh yeah, I'll have to find them. They're they were they were dope. Oh, I'm gonna have to see them. I, that's my favorite movie. Really? Nostalgia. Yes, 
I used to watch that movie over and over. I was going to say The over. Wiz, not The Wizard of Oz. I'm but. sorry. I like Judy. <laughs> <laughs> no, y'all hate when people say that to me, too. That's like, it's I'm like sorry. You're black. No, um, but no, shut up. <laughs> shout out to Mosh, man. Appreciate you making time. We definitely got to stay in touch. Next time we're in Connecticut, I don't know when that's going to be. But whenever we're in Connecticut, we're definitely going to link up. Um, hopefully, we'll make it to a restaurant. Connecticut event. pizza. You got to talk to me into Connecticut it. Pizza. Oh, whoa, 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 I'm talking about what is Connecticut pizza? Hey, Caesar said I'm on the way. Exactly. I'm catching a fight tonight. He owns what is Connecticut pizza? Um, it, it's usually like a coal fired pizza. Um, I know it, it's just a different thing. It's like the char on the bottom. Um, okay. I know Pepe's is, is known for like their clam pizza and things like that. I know Detroit style pizzas. I like pizza no matter what. Right. But um, they, I'm not too. one of those people that's elitist and says that, you know, this is better, this is better. I just Chicago like pizza. I'll eat Chicago all the time. I say I'll eat Chicago too. I don't care. Right. I'll eat right. whatever. I mean, look at me. Look at me. I'll I'll eat whatever pizza. <laughs> <laughs> no, most him. definitely. No, but I appreciate you making time for us. Like I said, and I appreciate you coming on the show. And let's not make it the only time that happens. So right. until then, no, until definitely. next time. Yes, sir. Pre- Thanks, appreciate guys. you. Appreciate yes, you. Sir. Nice Peace. to meet you. Thank you. No, that was Mosh, artist, designer, and customizer. You got to go, too. Give me some shoes. Yeah, nice. Hey, we down to a skeleton crew. It's been good, people. Time yep. This is what happens when you do a lot of show and people have real jobs. <laughs> um, What time is it? You know, on that note, I'll go ahead and apologize to the listeners. I won't be here next week, but I'm sure it'll be a decent episode. I'll try and call in and keep everyone entertained and do it's my best. Be best show yet, it's possible, yeah. yeah. You know, I was in California once. I called in. You guys didn't even take my call. That's wow. was that a different studio back then too. All right, so I'm gonna call on this this time, and hopefully, hopefully you guys will take the call. I'm gonna answer. Thank you. Well, there was. I have to announce it to like let you guys know. I, it's right. me calling in. Take the call. So there's one thing. So there's one thing that I do want to do. Um, there was a new segment that we have called uh, "My First Love," and so it's one of the things that I wanted to do. I wanted to add it to the show because everybody has a story. Uh, about their first shoe, like there's a set of circumstances surrounding it, like maybe your parents worked overtime, it was their first Air Jordan, first Nike, first whatever. These are my first Jordans. Oh. Put them up. Wow. This started the love of Jordans for me, my 17's right here. And I actually <laughs> so had these stolen. Right I had these stolen <laughs> from me uh, sophomore year of high school. Oh, wow. And then I bought yeah. another pair, so it's got that sentimental value. I have That's never had you a can't pair stop of me. Jordans I got the one from the pack. Oh yeah, I think that was the a suede, suede one. No? Yeah, yeah. yeah, suede one. Uh, so, I still got the red and white seventeens too. These are these are my oh favorite. My so uh, Look at you. so we got a segment. Like I said, it's called My First Love, where basically uh, we are just kind of highlighting different people's stories. So um, the first one is starting with the VP of Global Product Design, Research and Development at Carhartt, our good friend Ben Av. This is his story. Oh, I thought we was getting our stories. No. Can yeah, we I went right ahead. When right, like, Caesar asked me to record a video about my first pair of sneakers I bought, um, I hesitated. I didn't want to tell the story. It's a little lame, a little sad, but here goes. When I was younger, must have been like kindergarten, I had a bone disease in my leg and foot. It was called Osgood's Schlaughter. How about that? And as a result of it, I had to be in a cast for a number of months. And then when I came out of the cast, I had to wear these big Frankenstein-y corrective shoes. Uh, It was not a good look. I was already kind of like a heavy, goofy kid. And to be running around in, actually not running around, I wasn't even allowed to run or jump for a year, which was also not great. Uh, and I had these, like I said, these big, nasty, oh, corrective nice. shoes. It couldn't have been uglier. Uh, my mom, though, being a caring and loving individual, when I got into the cast and the corrective shoes, she told me that when I got out of them, I could get any pair of shoes that I wanted. And at the time, this must have been 1978, 79, uh, the big athlete wasn't Michael Jordan. It wasn't, um, it wasn't LeBron, it was Bruce Jenner. And Bruce Jenner had a line of shoes at Buster Brown's. Um, I'll send Caesar some pictures of it so you can get some, um, get some visuals of it. And I remember just thinking, wow, if these things worked for 
Bruce Jenner, uh, who is this Olympic athlete and, you know, is on the, on the Wheaties box, it must be able to help for me. So when I got out of the cast, when I got out of those corrective shoes, when I could finally start running and jumping again, true to her word, she took me to uh, Buster Brown and I got this pair of shoes. I still remember what they look like. It was really funny to do the research and go back and see the shoes because I had this real nostalgic moment. And trust, I've been in a lot better shoes with a lot better stories since then, but that is, uh, that's I the first pair of shoes that I remember buying. Yo, yo, we're back. Shout out to Ben, awesome. Ben AV, VP of Global Product, Product Design Research and Development at Carhartt, which is also a Detroit staple. Shout out to him. I got to be Johnny on the spot next time. Y'all drop those uh, Carhartt Peacoats. So that shit was fine. I still need those I Carhartt dunks. Huh? I still need those Carhartt dunks from back in the day. Man. Oh, wow. I, man, I need those Carhartt M&M joints. That's, <laughs> that's they had a I Carhartt need. on the tongue? No, the whole shoe is Carhartt. There was a brown and a black, and it was okay. just like yeah, real collection. simple. The whole. But I'm saying, like, as far as like we you know, where our Nike. Oh yeah, tag where the Nike SB tag is, tag is I think so. Yeah. That's sweet. No, I definitely I need. I'm mad. He said his first shoes. His was Buster Brown from. Buster. No, like I mean, it's funny though because I thought those was only made for walking for babies. Buster it, Brown. It's funny because you hear like Buster Browns. Like I, I even think about like LA gear. Like, oh my god. How that was some of our first pairs of sneakers. I used to be looking. I'm gonna like, bring LA gear back. Those. I don't think I like those. Uh uh-uh. uh. You ain't like I was LA like, them is cheap. I was always a fan of like a sneaker light up, but I would never like yeah. Give me an all black LA gear with like a, a dead rose on it and Man. some red flashing lights, and I'm going to kill it. Right. My first, my shoe. Just wasted youth on Back the LA in the gear. 90s, pretty much. LA gear was that shit. They were, but mm-hmm. it ain't the 90s no more. Uh-uh. I, my favorite <laughs> shoe I remember getting was, I think, either that Fila with the little cursive. I think they brought that back too. Mm-hmm. And I remember like just. I was just, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a little sister of a big brother, so everything he did, I needed to do. So right. it's like, mm-hmm. oh, he got those, I need those, and we both got those shoes, and I was excited. And then those gray heels, like I told y'all before, with the little black, they came yep. back out too, and those was like my two pair. Other than that, I rock a pair of gray heels. Oh my, oh, yeah, gray heels is fire. I never had Speaking a pair of, of which, Jordans. You, you look so different ever since we came back from that video. <laughs> That it's took me so a different. second. I was like, what? He had right. a glow up. <laughs> no, I just. <laughs> the glow up. I hope he hears that. I hope he hears that. I, hope he hears I that. need I hope some J's on my feet. Because I, I never wore a pair of Jordans in my life. Really? Never. Never. Yeah, where's our boxes of shit, Sees? I don't know. Since Guru's not here to ask, we're going <laughs> to I know. I, mean, I guess you're going to be. Okay, you're going to play the part of Guru. He's going to give me shit. I, listen, I am working on a lot of things. So, mm. I, honestly, I, you know, I will say this, and you know this. <laughs> So a lot of it, you know, having these conversations with people directly, they know about the show and they know about me. And so they be like, all right, see, well, since they talk to me directly, you know, since I'm having these conversations. And so, but I do try to say, hey, what about those guys? And I'm like, eh. Hey, since right. Guru's not here, oh. yeah. Guru's not here and he's probably not going to hear this. I say you tell him, like, hey, you got the jersey he was looking for. You wrap it up in a nice uh, Mitchell Nuss bag. And it'll just be like a Bot Topic t-shirt or something. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it for the next show. Um, but I do want to get into this week in stupid because some of these stories, man, I, they always crack me up. Because um, you would think after so many episodes, I mean, what is it? Two hundred ninety. Literally every episode we've been able to talk about at least one story where somebody did something dumb with sneakers. And so um, this week in stupid, this is actually an update. Uh, an article written by Brandon King for Sneaker Shop Talk. Dot com. Police in Howard County, Maryland, admitted arrest stemming from a robbery that happened back in late November. Uh, on November 28, 2020, an adult male told police that he was approached by five male suspects while faces were partially covered for COVID. <laughs> um, one of the suspects displayed a handgun and relieved the victim. I love how they said relieved, like he didn't want his shoes, like the burden of having his own shoes. Right. Uh, relieved the victim of his cell phone and sneakers before fleeing the area. Investigators identified and arrested 17-year-old Edwin Espinoza Sanabria, or Sanabria. Yeah, say that five times fast. Uh, He was charged as an an adult with armed robbery, uh, assault, theft, and weapons violations. So, yeah. Uh, There's actually a robbery here in Detroit that happened not too long ago. Uh, Men steals flat-screen TVs 
and nine pairs of shoes during home inv invasion. An article written by Amber Ainsworth for Fox 2 Detroit. Detroit police are looking for three men who stole TVs and shoes from a Detroit area home. The men broke a window at a home and proceeded to steal a 48 inch TV and a 75 inch TV. As w 75 inch TV just is excessive. Like, How are you that stealing that though? How many TVs did you say he stole? Two. A 48 inch and a 75 inch. Nobody right, saw nothing. Because I thought I heard something about nine. I understand. 75 inches the same <laughs> excessive. Especially like if you don't live in a mansion where there's like enough real estate between you and the TV. Like if you're sitting right up on it, like you see American okay. Dream. You were going to give yourself this a close to your TV. Like. Yeah, it's like, no, like, I, no, like, I, I remember know. somebody broke in my house and stole my pair of all white Air Force Ones, and it was a guy. And I'm like, why are you what? stealing my shoes? Like, what was he going to do with those shoes? <laughs> like, who does that? Huh. Uh, so they stole nine pairs so of men's possible. shoes before a fling in a white SUV. Surveillance video from inside the house. Not the white SUV. By the way, the <laughs> supposed to be blacked out. Exactly. You think? I'm going to stick the out like a sore man. thumb. Uh, surveillance Damn. video from inside the house. Now, that's the part that, like, of all this information from the story, it's the surveillance video from inside the house, which makes me think, what type of house was this? But then again, they called the police, so maybe not. I don't know. Uh, see, MJ's laughing. Surveillance video from inside the house shows one of the men walking around the home during the crime. One man was described as black with a slim build, about 5'10 to 6 feet tall, and was wearing a black hat with Detroit written right across the front. I love it. Like, you self-identify yourself. Like you wear things that are <laughs> easily identified. You got this hat with Detroit on it. You want people to know where you're from. Uh, <laughs> well, who are you from? Right. right. Well, at least it wasn't <laughs> right. seven mile on the hat. Right. Like, no, like, what are you doing? Joy Road. Right. Evergreen is seven mile. <laughs> uh, Rash it. See so a hat with Detroit written across the front, a gray hooded sweater, black jogging pants, and black shoes. Uh, descriptions of the other three men are unknown. Anyone with information is asked to call the police at 313-596-5840 or Crime Stoppers at 1-800-SPEAK-UP. Mm -hmm. The chances are nobody's going to call in. They're going to know what time it is when they see that uh, that black hat with the, with the D on it <laughs> yeah. and the white SUV. Like, mm -hmm. They go, I already Where know. Where have I heard of this story? Mm -hmm. uh, woman, um, this is crazy. Woman just arrested at airport for smuggling $40,000 of cocaine and shoe soles. Mm -hmm. Maybe she didn't know. <laughs> she might have just bought the shoes from somebody. <laughs> right, just so happened to be filled with cocaine. Like, right. I, just, I just, just bought these at the parking was, lot. And the inserts, like inside, like so. In, in I between think I heard that. So yeah, like my insole, my insole. Yeah. yeah. I heard smugglers were trying to put like like the actual flake on on cereal, and I don't know how they were like trying to remove it or strip what? it down, but like the processes they'll go through just to get some good drugs. It's you remember Chong? Remember that you know, the good the fight, meat meat guys. Remember that Bruh. marijuana truck from Up and Smoke. <laughs> That's too much work. That was I just need a Weed's too easy these days. You, you know, right. there's someone in the next stage growing or whatever. meth truck mix. It's way too much work. Just use a drone. Like, just drop it off. Like StockX was trying to do. Uh, let me Shoot drop you They weren't, okay, not StockX was selling cocaine. They were doing the delivery with the shoes. Well, look at Domino's. They got uh, their little neuro Last thing I need card. is an email from StockX. Like, you accused <laughs> us of selling cocaine. No. Hey, what no. I, I just applied to work everywhere. there for like the eighth time. Not even like two hours later, I got a rejection letter. Like, oh, we've decided to move forward. I can uh, tell you why. <laughs> I can tell you why. All about that. But no. But me, you didn't even read, they didn't even read the letter. There's no chance they, they even had a chance to read the cover letter. the show. That's what it is. Yeah, it's my resume. It's my LinkedIn. Yeah. StockX, <laughs> if you're watching this, and I'm saying StockX as if, as if StockX is a person. StockX, nobody's saying you sell cocaine. What I'm saying is the same way you're going to deliver shoes via drone, I'm saying drug dealers, step your game up. Use technology. Use a drone. Why well, go through yeah. all this? Right. You're talking about putting cocaine on cereal flakes and then you don't want nobody to grab the drone is. with goods. What's the process of getting the cocaine back off the flakes? How does that work? Lick them? That I don't know. Um, I you can just do like Gus Fring. Open up a chicken joint, right? Put the cocaine in the in the batter. F <laughs> fuck that. Eat the cereal. See what happens. Right. Just eat the cereal. Depend on how mouth goes numb. <laughs> Man, I don't even want to know what that's like. I don't want to know. It's a like. process. It's probably a process. Yeah. I'll figure it out. Some I'll kind of know. degrade. They get something. They do. Well, Melt it down. I don't know. In an article written by Terracy Mahadevan. Listen. Okay. Listen. Real quick. I need you to practice. Real, real quick, man. Listen. We're not the, the most cultured show. For all the news networks, for all the blogs, can y'all please have people with the last name Smith or Jones write these articles? Because I'm having a hard time by like, reading some of this stuff. <laughs> uh, Tara C. Mahadevan for Complex. Syllable. Oh, Complex of all places. They're not going to do me any favors. Our other buddies. <laughs> yeah, they're not going <laughs> to do me any favors. 
That's probably why they was like, who has the weirdest last name? We're gonna cause he's gonna read our article on the show. You come over here, write this article. Yeah. Uh. Customs and Border Patrol agents recently arrested a 21-year-old woman at an Atlanta airport who smuggled three pounds of cocaine in the soles of seven pairs of shoes. 21 in Atlanta, she knew. Right. Never mind, she knew. I'm trying to do the math. She like, was well, a three stuffer. Pounds <laughs> divided by seven shoes. I wonder if it was a, uh, what you call that? When you put your luggage on, you got to like, appreciate what they put it on board. So oh, it was like under, yeah. Uh, under, uh, yeah. The, um, the under the plane. I'd have been like that. Look, I don't know who bag that is. I, I'd have played dumb. I did. Like, well, I mean, I wouldn't even have been in there. What? I would have turned right. Spanish real good. I'm like, K? Okay. What? Talk about K. Okay. What? Oh. That's not my bag. Um, <laughs> the street value of the cocaine was approximately $40,000. The unidentified woman was traveling back to the U.S. from Jamaica. Mm. When agents flagged her for further inspection after her arrival, officers then discovered a white pottery substance in the bottom of her shoes, uh, which ranged, which ranged, this is the crazy part, which ranged from sandals to sneakers and wedges. How do you smuggle cocaine in sandals? Like, what she, she thought her name was How thick are those Griselda soul? Blanco. Exactly. She was she trying to Frank Lucas. <laughs> Hey. She walking around, dust coming out her feet. <laughs> like, what the? Oh, that's baby powder. Losing <laughs> right. money. <laughs> Losing money, right. Uh, let's see. The substance later tested positive for cocaine. Surprise. Uh, customs agents posted images of the shoes and of an agent taking them apart on the table. A pack of cocaine can be stuffed or be seen stuffed into the shoes sold. The woman was handed over to the local police department for state prosecution. They must have been watching her. Ass. So I'm, Oh, yeah, they flagged her. I'm getting confused because right. they saying the sole, is it like the instep? So like the entire shoe where I put my foot in because... I'm assuming the sole's hollowed out at some spot. Yeah. yeah. So basically what it sounds like to me is they are... They're so treating got, it like the transmission. So you got the last, right? So you got the insole and then you got the, the struggle board right at the bottom and then you got... Whatever's in the midst, so whether yep. it's an airbag or whatever cushion the system, right? They hollow it out, put the cocaine in, then put that probably the struggle board and the insole back over it to make give the appearance like, oh, it's a regular shoe. It's crazy. No, I don't know why your dog is going crazy. You know, mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a regular shoe. It's just shoe, my regular shoe. Um, a pack of cocaine. Oh, okay. On an average day, Customs and Border Patrol sees three thousand six hundred and seventy-seven pounds of drugs. From people traveling in the U.S. In fact, Not a surprise. In fact, smuggling drugs in the soles of shoes has almost been a tried and true method. So, if you are wow. going to smuggle drugs, right. use this is going to be the the next collab for Pusha T on Adidas. Uh, right. I'm just saying, like, if you're going to smuggle, if you if you're going to, I'm not telling you to do it, but if you're going to, uh, use sneakers. And then, it's, if it's trendy, I wouldn't even. What y'all thinking about? Because you know, I'm like I'm, they got it through through souls, so just put them in through souls. That's not what we doing. And you in Jamaica? I'm just saying, like the like, the, the the advancement of technology. How right? about this? If you really have a master plan and you're that confident, just ship it to yourself. Don't hop on a plane with it. It's all about who you know, right? Yeah. Or this is what you do. If you're gonna ship it, like Dunk said, suggested. Find, I'm not find facilitating. A, this. Find an abandoned house, right? Like an abandoned house that nobody, you know, is abandoned. Like there's plenty of them here in Detroit, right? Ship it to one of those abandoned houses. You do have to be slightly uh, careful with that. They are trained to look, but just ship it to, I don't know, let's see. So how are they going to pinpoint it to you? I mean, I so, guess, yeah, no, funny can. thing they is, because when you send a shipment, yeah, you got to put your information on the box. You could use a fake return address. Right. But they gotta, they're going to see you. See, yeah, like when but you, depending on where you drop it off at, they're going to see Because there's cameras everywhere now. You're not the one who drops it off. I don't, I'm here to talk about sneakers. Exactly. More so. Uh, I'm just I can help you guys with whatever needs to be done. I'm just spitballing. <laughs> sneakers have a way of starting conversations. Last week we had wow, a conversation so about religion. So sneakers like like the like a drug business? Saran wrap, hey. gloves, little mayonnaise. Give some give some chick hundred dollars. Go drop it off, hey. and then wherever it's going, they don't even need to know. I'm just saying. I mean, people ring, sell shoes. Chicken, so. But we know he was really selling. I'm just saying. You watch Breaking Bad, or am I the only one that watched it? Yes. I think we yeah, are. I, I watched it. Methods You've are a different seen breed, bro. I no, watched I've it. never seen The Office either. I love The Office. Duh, turn her camera off and her mic. That's ridiculous. That's you that watch like either one 12 o'clock. I've to never watch. seen The Office. Honestly, yeah. I don't know. Okay, homework assignment. Both of y'all. Watch The Office. You in particular. Watch Breaking Bad as well. Okay. Like, I don't know which one you want to start off with. <laughs> well, I've seen The Office. I've seen it like a snippet. And it's like, it wasn't it. 
Like it was. You gotta be into episode. that real, real dry got, comedy. I would love it. <laughs> if I, am I gonna love it? Then I'll watch it. But you, I think you'll love it. Is it like? Well, it's I not, don't know. Like it's not for everybody. Uh, it depends. What did you start? Did you start with the first season? I don't know. You know, you just flick the TV and then it's right, there. Right. Right. It's well, not it's like no Martin you. episode to where you watch it. And so here's what I it. tell you: a lot of people don't like the first season. It was I, boring. I, I thought the first season was funny, and then I think seven, eight, and nine were trash. Mm-hmm. Two through <laughs> six were. Hold on, how many seasons shit. is it? I remember seasons. the seventh. I ain't never oh, gonna watch it. Two I'm through catching seven. Up. Two through seven, I think, because those are the episodes after Michael Scott left. That's when it was like, like eight. Which and nine one was, was trash. that? Huh? Who? Which, who was Michael Scott? The main boss. That was uh, Steve, Steve Carell. That's what I say. That, can you say his real name, please? Well, he's, if Back. you watch the show, then I mean, I, it was fifteen years. You're not ago. a real fan. No, no that was twenty years ago. I don't remember. No, but Steve Carell. Yes, when he left. It That's was. I was over it, nose but it was getting boring because after no, the little was. two office people got together, it was kind of uh, like what? Jim and Pam. Yeah, it's like the what, office what else? people got together. <laughs> you don't even know the name of the character. It's been ten years. I can't remember. Oh my God. Well, MJ, I would say she ain't about to watch that. I know she's not. So you're but, wasting I know she's your gonna humor me. You seen Queen of the South? No. All right, so you watch Queen of the South, and I'll take <laughs> one of them shows and watch them. Ah, right. Breaking Bad. Now you gotta make me Breaking pick. Bad? Yeah, I said Breaking, Breaking Bad, Bad Breaking to give you more. Because you know what? You'll trust me. That. Like, anything I tell you after that, you're gonna trust me. Okay. Now nah, I will I'll say this. Still won't. Once again, I feel like I, it's funny. There goes the office right there. I feel like I gotta <laughs> preface this. Once again, a lot of people, okay, some people, had trouble getting through the first two seasons of Breaking Bad. But it's, this is what storytelling is about, people. You got to create a baseline. You got to create a foundation, right, in which to build the story on. They both comedies? No. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Breaking Bad is a drama, but it's one of the greatest shows, if not the greatest show of all time. So, watch Breaking Bad first, and then watch The Office. Okay. And I'll watch, what is it, Queen of the South? Queen of the South. So or do you watch Narcos? I have need, I've all right, so either one, because both of them are... Uh... Okay, it's two shows for two shows. I, I, you watch The Office and Breaking Bad. I watch Narcos and Queen of the South. It's, it's different. It's different sections of Narcos, or you know. Okay. From sneakers right. to Narcos and everything in between, we so, got you guys covered. So I got I got to say <laughs> right. this: How do we know? How do I know you're watching it? Like what? Is I'll there... inform. I'll, I inform you. I'll keep you updated okay. on what's what. Okay. Same here. I'll get to know in people's names. <laughs> all that other Ask your question. You can always Google it. I already, she's going to Google it and I'm then tell it. When someone's it. into Breaking Bad, you know, because they'll start talking about it or referencing it. Mm-hmm. That's true. How many seasons of Breaking Bad? Five. Okay. That ain't so bad. The, the uh, movie after wasn't too great. You could skip the yeah, movie. Yeah, skip the movie. Skip the movie. El Camino or something? Yeah. Okay. That was fan service. Okay. Uh, Did you watch uh, Call Foul? No, Saul? I tried, didn't like it. Did yeah. you watch it? Call Saul is too. just it was, as good. I only seen like the first. Three episodes. And I'm like, this is kind of better. Call Saul. It's like when Friends did the spinoff with Joey. Like, it's no, just... don't you say that. That's <laughs> bullshit. Better Call Saul is actually a good show. It was okay. It's not it, was, it was. It's not, it started it's getting no. dry. Better Call Saul is good. Too. Don't listen to them. She don't even know the characters' names. So definitely don't listen to her. Oh my god. Dunks is a reseller. Don't listen. to Jim her. and Sarah. <laughs> listen. I'm, Dunks is a content really creator. Dunks a is a content that. creator that's dabbled in the resale world to help stay relevant in the sneaker community. Dabble. <laughs> That's what we're going to use. Yes. Dabble. Dabble and dabble. (laughs) Oh, man. Uh, You know, I'll read one more story. So, uh, an article or a man charged with robbery and sneaker sales. Surprise, surprise, right? In an article written by Brandon King for SneakerShopTalk.com, a man in Enfield, Connecticut. In Connecticut. So, maybe Mosh knows him. uh, Was arrested after a sneaker sale went awry, according to police chief Alaric Fox. That sounds like an actual type of fox. Like I would, I would love to have that Alaric as a fox. title for a sneaker release. Oh my god! Alaric fox. Alaric fox. The theme that just sound like yeah, Alaric appealing. Fox dunks. I didn't say nothing about no dunks. <laughs> <laughs> but dunk lows. That's the MJ collab coming out. The Alaric fox Nike SB dunk uh, dunk lows. Uh, police chief Alaric fox. Uh, he said officers were driving through the Bigelow Commons housing complex. One night, shortly after 11 p.m., when they had a brief conversation with the man waiting in a car. That sounds like the start of every scary movie I've ever seen. Uh, the man indicated that he was waiting for 23-year-old Xavier McFarlane. Not the first and last name. Right. Who was set to buy a pair of $320 Air Jordans, uh, negotiated through offer up. That's the first red flag for me. I mean, you, any, any deal set up through offer up is almost destined 
for failure. Like <laughs> somebody is going to commit People, some type of crime. People, somebody Do you buy off offer up and like? Mm, I no, that's so. just no. Mm. The officers told the uh, uh, the officers told the man good luck. I don't know if they told him that because they really felt that way or because he was buying a pair of $320 pair of Air Jordans through a housing complex. I don't know. I, at <laughs> late at night. Probably both. Yeah. Uh, little did the man and the officers know that he was to become a future victim of a robbery. I'm pretty sure the, the officers, officers had The officers clearly clue. knew. They, they said had good a clue. luck. When they said good luck, <laughs> even though I wasn't there to hear it, it sounds like it was sarcastic. Right. Uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. We'll be around if you need us. Uh, shortly after the interaction between the uh, officers and the man in the car, the same officers were later flagged down by a woman who said she had the robbery victim in her car. Surprise. She told the officers that while the man was talking to Xavier through his passenger window, another man snuck into the driver's side with a gun and demanded the victim's gun. So he came prepared, just got, you know. Got the drop on him. Exactly. Uh, so he demanded the victim's gun Why along with the alone? cell phone. If you brought your gun, you would think you would bring some other people, too. Well, um, no, yeah. The, right. you, know what's, you know what beats one gun? Two. Exactly. <laughs> you know, <laughs> know what beats one phone? Have a look. Two. Right. right. You need to look, have a look at person. Look at look, look, look. Uh, The victim managed to escape and was able to see Xavier and two other males rifling through his car as he ran away. Xavier and his two mm. accomplices stole the victim's gym bag, which contained $350 oh. worth of boxing gear, which isn't cheap, and the pair of Air Jordans. Xavier was eventually arrested and charged with two counts of first-degree robbery. He was arraigned in Hartford Superior Court the next day and released on a $50,000 bond. Hmm. He's 10%. Due, yeah. Mm. Tip, oh, yeah. You got the difference. That's, that's still five Gs. Where he get and that in the bail bonds, man. If you mean, got, first just, of all, if you got money like, like that, why are you stealing? Right. Uh, he's due back in court <laughs> later this month. Chief Fox said that the investigation into Xavier's two other accomplices is still ongoing. So, over yeah. a three hundred dollar pair of gym shoes. Exactly. What kind of shoes was right. it? That's Jordans. My point. If you got five thousand dollars to bail yourself out, why are you still three hundred dollars? You want to be in jail? You gonna find five thousand from somewhere? <laughs> this is why we call it this week is stupid. There you go. Well, <laughs> you have five thousand dollars of disposable income to where you can bail yourself out, but you still in three hundred dollars shoes. Dollars shoes so well, let's. Say. You know, seven hundred when you add the boxing gear. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this is dumb, dumb shit. Well, it's in brighter news, they're um, extending the river walk to Belle Isle. So you <laughs> hear any train? Uh, yeah. They need Sick. to do something more with the river walk because it's hard. We talked about when we went to all the different places. When we went to San Francisco. When you go to the wharf, you come back. It's like, you know, when we first had the Riverwalk, we was excited. But that's what happens when you don't have nothing, right? Right. You go to the Riverwalk. Hey, we finally have something. And then Riverwalk you go, here? Yeah. Okay. Which is still nice. But then you go to, like, the wharf, and it's like. Are you talking about by the apartments? so far yep. behind. Yeah. The only time I'm walking that is, like, after the music festival movement or dump. And it's always a great time. So. No, I'm saying the Riverwalk is nice, but then it's like. Oh, well, I mean, maybe once they extend it to Belle Isle, it'll give people. They need to have attractions there. Like yeah, the wharf, need... mm -hmm. they have yeah, food, well, they, they, they have shopping. The man-made beach probably would be ready next year. Oh, boy. That they're creating. Oh, they, yeah. had a, they had a lobster fest at Hard Plaza I went to a couple years ago. That show was I terrible. I the lobster I fest, yeah. I, I remember that. Eventbrite had tickets for that. Yeah, they yeah. did. I remember I was there, like, trying to make the best of it. But I was like, this, uh, we got a lot of work to do, Detroit. Yeah, we, we, yeah. We, uh, this is why, that was one. If there's one downside to traveling, it's coming back home when you go someplace. Yeah. The only time I felt good about coming back home was when we went to Cleveland. So you know why? And I agree with you on that because in the sense of me buying or wanting to go out and, and it be adventurous. So yeah. if I'm coming to Detroit, I want to see what type of sneaker stores y'all got. I want to hit any outlets. And it's like, oh, yo, kind we got nothing. two spots that I would feel comfortable taking people. And it's sad because they just put this, <laughs> they put the Nike store downtown when like it's been what? Uh, sure. How many years? 2017, 2016? 2016. Yeah, about, about five, six years ago. Yeah. And Damn. Y'all don't send us nothing. Like, anything. No. Nope. And in the walk-ins that I do get or I do see, I remember I walked in on some uh, bronze Harachis. But yeah. it's like, we don't get nothing hot. We, we don't get nothing. And then, you know, we got one store, Burn Rubber, one boutique at least. So we got the Foot Locker store in East Point. Which ain't really got nothing. It's a right pogo now. up the street, right? Still pogo still oh, here. I think they're done. Uh, after yeah. they took over Mr. Allen's, they made a, a few unfortunate decisions, and uh, they got bought out by Snipes. Snipes. Yeah. So pogo was like an independent thing, and they kind of threw the whole skateboard concept away. It made no sense. Um, and then all the Mr. Allen's got bought out by Snipes. Yeah, yeah like, so. I like that story. So Detroit is lacking. So that's the one downside to. Um, 
coming here. I we guess. got consignment shops, but everyone does. I'd love to have a, a community store catered to the people of the community. The Detroit but, market. Yeah. Right. But, hey, we do or have not even Premier, Detroit, but, it's not but Detroit. yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, dang. I didn't really think I was. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, the perks of doing a live show. Yay. Hey, um, get to see something real. So on that note. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I want to start filming like this. I want to just carry a mic, sit around, walk wherever I want. I want to too. <laughs> and my back hurts throughout the show. This is bullshit. Right. <laughs> um, I've been standing up for two hours. Mm-hmm. So this is episode what? There you go. Two ninety two. Episode two ninety two. About eight episodes, eight or seven episodes away. I'm from sorry to cut you off, but I, when y'all was talking and I was just I was this is gonna be me in the future. Up. I mean, Detroit is now on I think the top twenty places to visit. So they try on whose list? The the news. Who made that list? They, whoever, yeah, okay. the I tourist who list. They they, I, I mean, it was are. on the Fox News. I mean, it's true. I'm from Detroit, and I wouldn't put Detroit on top. But that's because you're from here. I mean, it's, it's Most not, people from yeah. New York don't go see the ball drop on New mm-hmm. Year's Eve. They don't care to. I'm just saying. Like, who, I want to know who's like, oh, I got to go to Detroit one day. But we have certain things that cater to certain yeah, groups. Certain people, certain groups, certain crowds. Yeah. yeah we, got, we got the best after hours. If you guys want to come to Detroit. <laughs> yeah, according to Mayor, yeah, definitely going to Detroit from after hours. But... On that note, episode 292. Was it 293? 292. We're almost at 300. 293. Okay. We're seven episodes away from 300. 300. Are we going to have a party do the purple here? giveaway. Huh? For the 300th episode, we'll do that big purple oh, yeah. popsicle giveaway. I'm not, no. I only know like one or two We're people that can fit shit. that shit. At least nothing of mine. But anyway, MJ, no, you come I, up I up only know one. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I'll give away some expired Travis Scott cereal. I can do that for our listeners. Laced with cocaine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, on that note, we will see you guys next week. We love y'all. We out. Peace out. Jump in. Word of the week. Word of the week. Thank you, C's and the crew. Another episode Baby. in the books by the Sneaker Box underscore podcast crew. The word of the week. Don't focus on things that you can't change. Some things are out of your control. Just work on the things that are within your control and make them as best as you can. Things will get better if you're having a hard time. Somebody needs to hear this message that you can't give up. Circumstances are different for everybody. These are trying times right now and just do the best you can do and things will get better. Stay positive and tomorrow is another day. Don't focus on things that you can't change. All right. It's your main man, Jumpman Bossy. I'm fading to the back from the basement of the Jays. I'll catch you next week for another Word of the Week. Peace.